Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Actually, we have picture, right? Right? Uh, uh oh. Where is picture? Let me just check it via the website. Okay, yeah, we're good. Fantastic. Alright, so we were designing a 2x4 antimatter reactor. Um, since we have to truck in a ton of ice, um, not to mention burn a bunch of antimatter to test this thing, uh, we jumped into editor extensions to have a play with this. Uh, and this is what we came up with. I, I refined it just a little bit since uh, doing it on stream. Uh, all I did really was make it so that steam could flow all the way around here so that it would stay balanced. Surprisingly, uh, even though this is totally symmetrical, uh, it wasn't actually balanced in the first place or didn't stay that way. Um, and also, since uh, since the water was connected here, uh, and this underground has to go through here, pretty much, um, I just changed these ones to long arms so that the water can go straight through here. Um, I've tested this thing at, I think it was 11.1 .1 gigawatts consistently. Uh, and it works just fine, like with absolutely no dips in power. It can go like 5 or 10% higher temporarily. Um, the longer it's been running perfectly, the longer it'll last going over capacity. Mikelet, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good way to start. How was your stream today? Factorio, fantastic. Very good. Um, yeah, so we're building this thing because Foenestra. Uh, Foenestra has zero solar power, and if we beam power over to it... Um, which one was it? Yeah, we get 0.34% um, of the power that we pump into this thing beamed over as heat. Uh, so, it's a little bit inefficient. Um, you could still argue it's easier if we spam a bunch of solar power just to run this thing. But the amount that we would need is actually kind of crazy. Um, because this, this thing right here requires 10 gigawatts. Temperature 150C, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Computer addict, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Whiskers, fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Mike plus T hacks equals 16 hours straight SpaceX today. Alrighty then. Nice. That's almost enough hours of SpaceX. Um what's happening with our bots up here? Are these Okay. Um, are we not, are we not connected? That did something. Am I going to have to pick these guys up one by one? Looks like spiders are full. Um, no, this is just like my one personal, uh, transport spider. It's not got any robot ports. I like to do a 10 to 1 ration. 10 hours of Twitch watching SpaceX for even one hour that I work on my own base. I can relate to that. 
with some games. Um, yeah, I wasn't... I guess I'll just have to pick these guys up. It's probably the best way to deal with it. Uh, Redgar... Redgar Crest, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, we don't have full storage chests, so I'm not actually sure why the bots are doing this. Um, this is probably the fastest way to deal with it, to be honest. Although, fast is a relative term. Good grief. Uh, let me just disable that. There we go. I was just trying to get back into SE when a mobile game I play started an event. Rip. So many games, so little time. Okay. I was only, like, building this again just to illustrate the design anyway. Now, I'm wondering if, um, if we really need 10 gigawatts consistently at Foenestra, or if we only need it when we're using it, so we could maybe use some power switches or something. Um, but we'll worry about that when we actually get it working. Also, we're still stumped on what to do with this dimensional anchor. Uh, it says it has low power, even after we went to the trouble of acquiring 60 spare gigawatts to run this thing um it's just sort of it's just sort of sitting there saying that it has low power and you can see the electricity bar starts to charge up its energy capacity and then it just gives up after like five percent oh this part Saturn dragon bait welcome welcome hope you're doing well are you rebuilding for 0.6? Yeah, I'll start again for 0.6. Um, although I'll play, I'll be playing something else between this and an, another run of space exploration. Um, or maybe, maybe if I start it sooner, I'll, you know, not be doing it five days a week. Motorex, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also vulnerable to turn-based strategy slash tactics. Uh, what was that game? Mechanicus? That was pretty good. I like that there was, uh, there was no or minimal RNG, like the opposite of XCOM. You could actually, like, plan out your turn. Okay. Um, let's check in on everything else. Um, it's been a f few days since I played this save, so, uh, I kind of need to reorient myself just a little bit. We've been clearing out the old, uh, you can kind of see where they were because of these trees. Um, we've been clearing out the old, uh, defensive walls. We've been clearing out old bases. Um, just tidying up. What is this? I don't think these guys are ever moving. Um, why don't we try sending up construction spiders? And we'll just... I don't think it's going to work, but it's worth a try. Um, we'll put down a little... Um, just like a solar panel and uh, some storage chests and a roboport and see if they do anything. Um, but I think I might actually have to go up there manually. Normally I'd expect these bots to just float to the nearest robo-network. Uh, 
we probably don't need this many robopods now that we've got superchargers. Um, it's not gonna... No, that should be fine. Let's put some superchargers here. Actually, we don't need anywhere near that many either. As long as there's enough homes for the bots, uh, that should be fine. I very much doubt we even need two superchargers here. How is our Naquium flow right now? We've got... half of these furnaces are on, which means this was not running a little while ago. It's also out of Naquium. So... That's right, I remember. We, uh... We had everything, like, near perfectly balanced and perfectly consistent production of, for example, ingots. Uh, but we wanted more. Yeah, here it is. This flat line right up here that we had for hours. Uh, everything... All, all of the other bottlenecks were very, very close to that amount as well. But if we want more Nequium, we're going to need more Nequium processing. But now we've shifted our bottleneck to the Naquium itself, or Naquitite, rather. Um, I think I already sent a construction ship, yes, to Hankerus. We're going to add some solar power. Oh, we've already got... Oh, that's right, we ran out of scaffolding here. Alright, so all I have to do is park this thing here. We'll get all of this finished. Uh, plug these little holes. And then we'll put down another six... Uh, six times 255 times 12 megawatts. 18 gigawatts. That is going to be more than enough for a while. We just need to add like... Like seven gigawatts here. To beam some power over. Ead Drow, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ead Drow. Or is it L A D? Yeah, Lad Lad Drow. What's your stream today? Yeah, so once this is built, we're gonna beam some power over to yet another mining outpost at Stardust. Since this is by far the easiest way for us to add more Naquim throughput for now. Pretty good. Got to automate some science for our mega base. Nice, nice, nice. I've still never done a really good vanilla mega base. Maybe I should do that at some 9.3. Uh yes, please. Um, and over here, we've got another seven. Maybe I should do the pickup station in the middle here. We could actually take some belts this time. Wait, don't tell me. I, I don't think the... Yeah, I remember this. The construction ship doesn't actually have space belt. Um... I think I was maybe adding it to one of our ships, or did I get distracted? I could just ride my personal ship over there, it's quite fast, uh, and we'll, we'll take some space belt. Um, how many drills would fit around these mines? Just really approximately, let's say six by... Cool. 
call it about uh, 6 by 10, about 60 drills. Plus, this one's not so big. About 7 by 4. All right, so we're looking at 90 drills or less, I think. And with the modules that we use... Oh, this one's a bit different. We don't necessarily have the speed modules to spare. Here we go. Although maybe, maybe we should move them over there if the mine is big enough. Uh, so we're looking at a bit less than one belt of Nacrotite out of those two mines. So yeah, I think it might be good to belt it to a spot in the middle to have the bots move it. That'll also make it easier to... Um, to measure indirectly how much is in the spaceship, even though we're using set requests. We just have to subtract what is in the robot network, but not in the ship, from what's in the robot network. Um, Alright, let's tidy this stuff up. And we'll get some space belt together. I'll just throw it into my personal ship for now. Say five stacks of that. Um, I was going to copy-paste this over here, but... Okay. Is it coming? I don't think we have Space Belt delivered to this block, actually. And we really don't need 2.4k of this, do we? All right, we'll give that a minute to get delivered. Um, did we get our spiders up here? Yes, we did. So, uh, power, RoboPort, and storage chests. Hey, they're charging here, so that's probably going to do it. Cool. And we'll have the spiders just pick all of this up once the... Uh, once the bots have all recharged. Actually, can we maybe... get them all to use the supercharger? That's going to be a bit more effective. Look at them go. Actually, we're very, very bottlenecked on the power that goes into the supercharger now. Very, very, very bottlenecked on that. Let's go a little bit faster. Oh, we're already done, basically. Uh, 
Gotta go for now, 3 a.m. here. All right, Th uh, Ladrum, thanks for dropping by. I just solved, solved the Stargate puzzle this weekend. Wrote some code to do it for me. Interesting. Uh, I'm kind of excited that we need code to solve the problem. Cool, we finally got this sorted out. Let the bots catch up, and back to the mall with you. Fantastic. Alright, um, I guess... Well, first of all, I'm going to go back to the mall and empty my trash slots. But also, uh, maybe I should just manually grab some space belt since we're waiting on a couple of trains here. Um, I've already got a small amount. Just nowhere near enough to get this job done. Let's go 500 and 1,000. And then back to Hankaras. Looks like we're done with the scaffolding. I can probably get rid of that already, to be honest. I need to manually go over there as a player to pick up these uh, space capsules. I might do that in just a second. Since we're waiting on a couple of things. Never enough Naquium. Well, never enough Naquium plate. Ingots are pretty easy, actually. Well, we're halfway to launching another ship. What's our rate of production at the moment? It's actually about as high as it's ever been. It's just a bit inconsistent, which is exactly what I would expect for now. All right, let's drop off these space belts. Probably don't need that many. Probably. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go get rid of these capsules that have been sitting there since a hundred thousand years ago when we had a couple of very off-target spaceship crashes and these were just aimed from Nalvis. I don't understand how it was that bad. Normally um, these robo networks here around the cargo landing pads are just enough to pick up whatever debris lands if the spaceship crashes. Sorry, not spaceship, uh, cargo rocket. Um, but it hasn't been working that way, or rather just these two exceptions to the rule seem to have happened. I don't know when that was actually. Maybe we didn't have as much cargo safety research or something? We've got so many solar panels, it actually takes them time to place those. Normally the solar panels are just like the last couple of seconds, basically. Probably don't need this one either. Hmm. 
Alright, um... So things we need for... For our antimatter reactor. Nequium pipe, long, Nequium pipe, and antimatter reactor. Antimatter fuel. We've, we, and we do already carry ice. I think those are the only new things we have to add here. Computer Addict, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. These things only have a stack size of one. So we need eight inventory slots somewhere. Um, oh, this chest is actually empty. Cool. And... Well, we only need a handful, but we can go a little bit beyond that, I guess. Twelve and twelve. I don't really see myself making more of these, at least not for a while. In any case, I mean, a different design, that is. Um, we also need them delivered from the mall, and I don't believe I've automated uh, any Nequim heat pipe here. Where did I add the... Here it is. So we'll get the auto crafter to make some of that. Let's reset the timer and make sure it's working. There we go. Do we have Naquium plate here? Yeah, we do. Of course we do. All right. And then we need to request it over here. What's our threshold? One stack. Fine. Um, I'll put this here. It's a little bit of a waste to bring a whole stack of this here, but... We've got the throughput, it's not that expensive, and it's more of a hassle to change the way we do certain other things with this station. Oh look, that button again, Evil Pla, thank you very much for the six months, very much appreciated, thank you. Hey T-Hacks and chat, Evil Pla, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. What is, oh that's a tree. Yeah, this is, this is one of the sacred space trees. Or, I guess it's a dead sacred space tree, but we're still going to leave it there. Do I not have enough jetpacks? Oh, I, I forgot. We're at like one-third game speed right now. And up here as well. I think that's all of them. Goodbye, clutter. Oh, um, can I get... Yeah, I can. I can get the spider to follow me, even while I'm flying. But as soon as I toggle the jetpack, it's gonna lose its, uh... It's gonna lose its target. Because whenever you toggle the jetpack, you te uh, technically die. That's why bots and biters and things, like, lose track of you for a moment. What is this? Dropped cargo. 
one cargo rocket section. This has been here for such a long time. I actually remember seeing that. Probably like 2,000 episodes ago. I have Rick and Morty in mind now. Why is that? Some sacred space stone as well, I see. Indeed. Are there biders on other planets? Yes. Not any more on Nalvis. Sheep say man. Uh, Nemesis, Meowgamin. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's go grab this random... Uh... Can I pick this up from, like, in space? Is that going to be a problem? No, it doesn't look like it. Fantastic. Whoops. And our ship at Tankerus should probably be done. This bot is looking a bit confused. Used? Uh-oh. Do we not have the storage space? Let's just make sure the bots can reach this scaffolding before we remove that. Star Trek teleporters, if you are exact, takes you apart and thus, in reality, killing you, and then puts you back together somewhere else. Uh, yep. Raises a few philosophical questions. Personally, I think I would maybe not gamble on the suicide box. We do have a storage chest here, okay. Um, and now we just need to go and place this beam. Let's give it a minute. And let's just head over to Stardust. Let's set up our mine. And I want to say that's about all the throughput that I'm going to bother with for Naquium for this playthrough. But we'll see if I'm coerced into doing more. I take them Stargate wormhole teleporters any day over the Star Trek ones. Do you know if there are major changes in recipes for point six? Uh, not really. I haven't looked at it that closely. Chemical science, at the very least. Guy clicking. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm curious if I have to restart when I get back to my save. Yeah, it's... Uh, I'm only going by the consensus of what other people have commented so far. Um, I mean, it depends how deep into it you are, obviously. Alright, let's pick up our spider. And head to Stardust. With plenty of belt. And then... Get you to re-anchor. Right about here. What are these bots doing? Oh, ammo. Sure, go for it. Um, and I think this one has the same coordinates as this one. Yep. 
let's actually just put down... Do we have the power? Yeah, we've got like... 20 gigawatts to spare. Let's put down the next one ahead of time. And what's this? Another seven. We can do another one or two of these. So that we don't have to make another trip over here when we want to add another mine to Stardust. And as a bonus, um, we'll have three or four times as much power pointed at our new uh, power plant that we need to warm up. Why don't we have a pylon substation getting built? That's very weird. We have 200 of them. Oh, here we go. Also, that wiring, though. I say no to that. Uh, this line's going to disappear when we leave. Alright, what's our power looking at? Like, uh... We've got seven gigawatts to spare. I believe that is just enough that we can add one more of these. Very convenient. It might just go over because of this using a hundred kilowatt. A uh, hundred megawatts. Nope, we're good. No, wait, we haven't placed the beam emitter yet. You're kidding. Wait, no, we do have a beam emitter here. In fact, this is the last one. Oh, I think this bot was going back for recharge. That is a pretty tight fit. Very nice. Uh, so now we've got quite a bit of energy being beamed over. And we can divert, uh, what was it, three or four of these? Uh, we can actually divert four of these to our new receiver. When we put it down. Still got plenty of scaffolding. Yeah, that's right. There's now an orange science which comes from stuff you get after sending satellites. So one more that you build on the ground. Alright, ETA to Stardust. We haven't really accelerated yet, but it's going to be like 10 minutes. Um, our personal ship is 14 minutes away. How are we going for Arcospheres? Uh, let's see. Oof. No, I don't think this is I doubt that this is because of the diminishing returns. I think we just didn't launch a ship to get Arcospheres for a while. Does that mean our ship is still here? Yes, it does. And we've got quite a few collectors here still. Honestly, um, I'm beginning to wonder if we'll ever need to bother with setting up another location to get Arcospheres, despite the diminishing returns. Um, 
every little bit of extra Arcosphere just makes this a little bit smoother. Although we seem to have ended up with a ton of Lambda Phi again. Lambda Phi and Xi. Luckily, well no, not luckily. Um, we can convert Lambda to Phi and vice versa, which we are doing. We, they're only two apart, we probably shouldn't be doing this aggregate recipe here. But more to the point, as long as it's able to rebalance everything. Maybe I should give this an overhaul. Veldak had a pretty impressive uh, design for balancing Arcospheres. And I'm very curious to see it in motion as to um, how it would deal with getting a whole bunch of Lambda Phi, for example. What's this for? Tesseracts. Tesseracts are being consumed by this. Okay. We're actually almost full on Naquium processes here. Cool. Um, what else demands our attention? I could put some more effort into clearing out old things and replacing them with stuff that's more UPS friendly. I've been wanting to just clear out Tolibai for a while. I could use one of the construction ships to do that, although we do have to worry about the biters. I know. Why don't we take this energy beam right here and autoglave Tolibai. Um, it's a little bit unfortunate to destroy our stuff, but actually I really just want to get rid of it on this planet anyway. Meowning, Sydney Kenson von Ice Tea. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Don't tell me our stuff is immune to the autoclave. That seems a bit OP. Oh, no, no, it's definitely not immune. Rip. Um, but yeah, I've, I've wanted to clear this stuff out for a while. I could, I could even go as far as to just glaive my own stuff. Except I would have to do that manually anyway. Um, let's just clear the biters from Tolibai. Uh, and then we'll send a construction ship down to pick up all the old stuff. And the planet is so small, or the moon rather, that I might even just delete surface and not bother, not bother with this anymore. That'll save a little bit of UPS. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> at this rate there won't be anything left to pick up, and I'm okay with that, frankly. What a mess. Alright, you saw nothing. Um, what about our construction ship with the antimatter reactors? Doesn't have any yet. Do we have a train bringing them? Did it get overrun at some point? Yeah, a bite of media or two got past the defenses eventually. My uh, Tolibai, originally, the way I wanted to do outposts was to make them self-sufficient and just export um, the excess, but it turns out you have to build a lot to make that happen. Um, I think it's much, much better 
to just send everything back to somewhere central like Nalvis. Um, and then we don't get, especially because we're going to get a bunch of outdated spaghetti as we progress through the game, uh, strewn around at different outposts. Whereas if I want to update uh, Deadwood, for example, all we've got is basically some core mining drills, media defense, umbrella, some bots. Um, we've also got a power plant and uh, a system here for making liquid rocket fuel. Um, but that could be removed with relative ease. If I want to upgrade this to uh, to use antimatter ships, most of the work, honestly, would be in decommissioning the old ion ships. We've got like at least five of them going back and forth, bringing coal core fragments. Um, but yeah, every every separate ship is a bit more UPS cost. Not to mention the extra buildings that we wouldn't need on these outposts anymore if, if we updated them all. Uh, Morpheus has relatively a lot of stuff on it as well, for another example. And most of the stuff on Morpheus is because we're making a ton of liquid rocket fuel just so that these things can take off again. Um, off of a, well, it's not the size of the planet, it's the distance, because we were originally using cargo rockets for this. Yeah, um, I I'm a little bit torn because for a second, whoops, pardon me, uh, for a second playthrough, I would like to really design things before doing stuff and like have kind of a nice smooth upgrade path but on the other hand it would be good to maybe do k2 as well next time so so that we've got a whole bunch of new stuff to play with um yeah i haven't decided yet maybe i'll see what's more popular uh, Sanj as well. Sanj is a really big example of there's a whole bunch of stuff we could get rid of because we've got better technology now. Um, we've got ships bringing... Let me see if I can find one right now. Here we go. Uh, we've got ships bringing explosives and ingots and usually also delivery cannon capsules. Um so that we can send explosives and ingots down to here, so that we can make delivery cannon capsules here, so that we can send them back to orbit, so that our ships, which didn't have the fuel capacity to take off from this place, nor would we want to have to produce that much liquid rocket fuel, um, can pick up the copper core fragments from this place. Um, all of this can be removed because we can just have an antimatter ship just land here. Um, and it was, it was a fun thing, it, it was a fun challenge to, uh, to make all of this work, but from the point of the, uh, point of view for where we're at now, it would be nice to get rid of all that stuff and not pay the UPS cost for it. K2 is nice with SE, even before 0.6 it was well migrated. May as well go whole hog with K2. A lot of changes with 0.6, I suppose. Yeah, that is a pretty good point, actually. The more that 0.6 changes, the more they may as well overhaul it anyway. Uh, but yeah, for all the time I could spend replacing the old spaceships, uh, we could probably just finish the playthrough anyway, so I might just ignore those. 
Alright, um, what I can do right now, if I can find, if I can find where that mine was, here we go, 10 million, 9.3, oh, 10 million, except this one's not like right between 9.3 and 6.9 million with a lot more area for mining. Yeah, I think we'll set up about here. Um, we are going to need some scaffolding before we can get started with our reactor. I might just put it here, actually. And... Or down here, perhaps? And it might be easier just to belt whatever comes out of one of these mines all the way to the other. This is the obvious spot for a ship to land. So we'll have... Um, as long as we're belting things, we could just belt this through here and have, like, passive provider chests here or something. What is it? Uh, how many, sh how many chests do we need, though, to fill one of these? Start, I think it's like 75. Uh, 70 chests. Because we can't actually fill 75 chests with Naquium based on just over 25k sulfuric acid. Won't you be able to put all logistics in orbit in a new playthrough because of space elevators? Yes, it's going to be very different uh, in a good way, I think. Okay, um... I don't think I want to put 75 chests down here. I mean, it's not like we were doing that over here. This is... Wait, are these purple? Yeah, 19 plus... 7. We're basically just using the spaceships as storage. Which is fine, as long as they're always here, which they are. We can still do a bit of a buffer. Like, what, 16 chests? We'll need some scaffolding... I don't think anything bad can happen if I attempt to put scaffolding on top of the Naquatite, but I would rather not risk it. Drill. Actually, let's copy paste from over here so we don't have to give it the modules later. Um, I guess we could probably start from over here. And like so. That's actually one off from covering the whole mine. We do this. We won't need an extra row of drills. Although maybe we want an extra uh, column rather. Anyway, because we're going for throughput. Uh, 
that doesn't quite have coverage. Uh, we could move all of these down one. How many drills do I have? Um, I don't think I'm carrying... Oh. Actually, I'm actually not carrying any, but the construction ship has them. Uh, 97. What about productivity modules? Uh, we got 200 here, and I should be carrying... 300. Alright, we've got enough to totally saturate it, I think. Um, what's this? 5 times 24. So, 100 or so for this patch, and I think if we go for as many as possible, it's actually going to be close. Other thing to bear in mind, LTN trains don't support space elevators. Yep, because they're on different surfaces. There's an ongoing maintenance cost to elevators, so you got to gauge whether it's cost effective. Indeed. I wonder if the space elevator... Oh, what is this? Oh, right, I forgot. <laughs> that was my doing. Um, yeah, th this is fine. Th this is fine. Don't worry about it. It is just on Tullaby, right? Yes. Okay. Although, given how, just how close to Nalvis it is... We've got Lothar, which is much bigger, 5,000 radius. Um, if we just update Lothar, we can get a lot more throughput. Not that we've had any trouble with uranium for a long time. And Tullaby hasn't been working this whole time. Oh, we never even finished this nuclear plant. That's kind of embarrassing. Uh, nothing to see here. If you burn everything, you could just delete the surface. Yeah, that's what I'm planning to do. El Pancho, Midden, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. See, uh, good. I started reading what you said there, Midden. Seems to something something. Hope you're doing well. Your definition of fine seems to be different from mine. This is fine, indeed. This is maximally fine. Seven minutes. Maybe I could use the, uh... Oh, I think I missed my opportunity there. I was gonna say, maybe I could use the, uh, energy beam like a screenshot from here or something as the basis for a this is fine emoji. Emote, rather. I'd have to find the right spot where we could fit something recognizable in a small number of pixels. Hype fire, indeed. Okay, are we almost there? Um, this is us. And this is our construction ship. So let's continue planning. Um, we want... Fortunately, uh, it's really easy. What? Oh, there's a rock. Uh, it's incredibly easy to plan the layout for these mines because the total throughput for both of them is going to fit on one belt, I'm pretty sure. Actually, let me just grab a copy-paste of... 
as splitted as the deconstruction planner. There we go. Now I don't have to remember to do that later. And we can just have scaffolding that runs all the way across here. We're going to need to pipe sulfuric acid over there as well. Not to mention power, a bit of bot network, and some point defense coverage. Um, so, that said, uh, let's see, pipe as well. And I'll see how these line up before I continue down that way. And we could just do some roboports when we need to, not to mention the uh, media point defenses. That's going to fit there and there. Do we have any nearby ice? Technically. I mean, 30,000 is nothing to scoff at, actually. It's going to keep this thing running for a very, very long time. We do have the, uh, the delivery ships bringing ice as well. Has anyone tried updating a somewhat far along K2 SE playthrough to the new version? Wondering how much stuff breaks? I would also wonder about that. Okay, I really just want to get there physically before we plan anything else. Uh, what else can we clean up in the meantime? Oh, this old stuff. Uh, we did actually finally empty all of these. Let's get the old scaffolding spiders up here. Fantastic. There's a list here. Sorry about the auto mod, let me just paste that in. Updating to space exploration point six. Seems legit. Sartan Dragonbane? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Didn't the streamer raid the other night after upgrading mid game? Said a bunch of recipes were broken. Uh that does ring a bell actually. Do you play with increased tech or recipe costs? No. Space exploration is slow enough to begin with. There's a ludicrous amount of stuff to do in space exploration. Holdera, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, the throughput of Naquatite is pretty brutal as well. It takes a lot to get anything resembling um, a nice flow of this stuff. Most of the time in space is figuring out how the heck to build the next resource you need. Maybe. I am curious as... I, I, I think even if you had like all of your blueprints planned out before you even started, a playthrough of space exploration would still take a while. Maholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Alright. How's everything else going right now? Oh, do we have some signs? 
we do. We've got uh, 1.1k threes, and we get over 100% productivity bonus. Uh, 1.2k twos, and plenty of ones. So what do we want to research most? Uh, we can do the highest tier of computer. Oof, that is pretty expensive. More than a cargo wagon of Naquium processors to make one supercomputer. Um, but we could use that to get the highest tier of recycling um, data cards. Where are we recycling data cards? Here it is. Um, efficient data format. Data formatting. Here we go. Deep data formatting. 95% of the blank data card, uh, of the junk data cards we put in come back as blanks. For the cost of some cryonite, basically. That's really good. Also, the crafting speed of this thing is 6, as opposed to what? Um, the computers go 1, 2, 4. So it's 50% faster than the quantum supercomputer, uh, but I think it probably has more module slots as well. since the lower tier only had two. So it's at least 50% faster. Uh, and we get more of our blank data cards back. Not that we've had trouble with data card, uh, blank data cards for a while. Oh, I stand corrected. Uh, this was saturated last time I checked. So yeah, getting 95% of junk data cards back, uh, as opposed to, what are we on now, 80%? Wait, really? Deep data formatting, 95%. Uh, I wish I could search by formatting. Data formatting, 70%. Efficient data formatting, 80%. Neural supercomputer, this is a quantum supercom... Oh, yeah, there we go. One, two, three. Oh, the first tier doesn't do any of these, I think. Or it does, but it's even worse. So 80%, 90%. Oh, we could already have upgraded these to 90%. It would just be really expensive, but it's obviously cheaper in the long run uh, if we do a better recipe here. I think starting fresh would be ideal for most people, but I didn't want to spend 300 hours to get to where I was again, indeed. Maholic, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Construction ship has almost arrived. 53 seconds. Um, it's surprisingly empty right now, but we did need a decent throughput of, of recycling junk data cards before. Oh, I didn't pick something for research yet. Uh, I really can't care about the belts because it's just too late in the game for it to matter. The long undergrounds are a big deal, but like, we've already built everything. That's the thing. Put, put these earlier in the game, honestly. 
Um, we can do Factory Spaceship 3. Factory Spaceship 4. We can't quite afford it yet, but we can mostly knock this off. So we could get... We could go from 2,000 to 3,000 structural integrity on our ships. Um, we also need this one to unlock Spaceship Victory. But that's a ways off yet. We could do Wide Area Beacon 2. It's pretty expensive. But we could put it in specific places like our Naquium Mines. Um, that would actually be a pretty big deal. I think we will go for Wide Area Beacon 2. And maybe I should make some Tier 9 modules, if only for the Naquatite. Hmm... They're so expensive, but we're kind of at the point where we can seriously consider these now. Uh, better energy weapon damage would make our spaceships a bit safer. Not to mention make it easier to clear out fighters. Uh, is there anything... There's actually only 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 things that we can't directly research. We're getting there. We should probably unlock Deep Space 4 so that we can design this stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll put off the Wide Area Beacon until, uh, until we actually get that, so that we can design this stuff when we're waiting on other things. And then... Knock off these two. Oh, mining product. It's 20,000? That's kind of a lot. That's kind of a lot, a lot. Uh, I want it, but still... All right, fine, we'll knock it off after these two. Maybe I should... Uh, it's only 3,000... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only 3,000 Deep Space Science Pack 1s to at least give us the option for all of these uh, Tier 9 modules. So let's do that first. It's relatively cheap. Okay, research go burr. Mining productivity dropped from 18 to 5? Wait, what do you mean by that? You lose greater than half your research from migrating? Ouch. Current playthrough first, new progression, probably 50 or so hours from finishing anyway. Yeah, there's just so much to do um, if you restart. Okay. Where are we? 3 minutes 51, construction ship is about to arrive. And we're going to have it anchor right about uh, probably like here. Well, no, our, our ships are going to land here-ish, I think. So we can have our construction ship park itself like here somewhere. As long as it's out of the way of everything else and relatively close. Are we going to get that research done right now? 
no, it's 5,000 Deep Space Science Pack 3s. It's going to be a little while. Uh, we do have a lot more Pack 3s. Oh, wow. Okay. We actually have way more Deep Space Science than I thought. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah, I think we're getting Catalog 4 done relatively soon. Wormhole data... Teleportation data... This one requires a deep supercomputer. Maybe we should get that a bit sooner. Uh, but yeah, wormhole data and teleportation data. We can arrange for that as soon as this research is done. And since they need, um, archospheres, we'll probably just be jamming them in here somewhere. Narcospheres are looking pretty balanced right now, actually. Well, the main thing is that we are able to keep it working. Cool, cool, cool. Now, finally, our construction ship has arrived. Anchor right about here. And we'll start building out a couple of superchargers. Construction, uh, radar construction pylons. I can't see where the wire would connect. And we'll be needing some more superchargers somewhere along the way. Probably put one here. So it's further than I thought it would be. No, uh, it doesn't have to be that close for the recharge. Although the bots are getting ahead of themselves a little bit here. Uh, could you please put down this scaffolding? So that we can get some supercharger happening? No? Okay. Priorities on... Uh, building ghosts would be a huge improvement. That, that's something that could be pretty simple to add that would make a very big difference. Especially if we could have those in blueprints. Yeah, they're not building this way at all yet. But this scaffolding down here is apparently a super high priority. 
Right, we're still two minutes out until I get there personally. Deep Space Catalog research is blocked on tier three at the moment. How much more do we need? Uh, half of 2.5k, about 1200. And we've got, what? Uh, 300, 400, plus 600. We're actually really close. Uh, it's not all in the lab at the moment. Uh, the lab block. But we're, we've actually almost got everything we need for... for this research already. You seem to lose FPH each time I see you? No, we've been down to 19 before. Ben Wu? Chamot? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing that. Uh, hope you're doing well. Are you going to connect the patches via rail? Uh, not this time. I don't know if I'll get that far, honestly. I would have to change it to using... Uh, media defense installation ammo, which seemed really overkill uh, when we started in this place. Um, yeah, I would need to change to using media defense installation ammo because it's just too much of a hassle to cover everything with... Uh, point defenses if I use rail. We'd also need to bring... We'd need to distribute uh, sulfuric acid by rail as well. It's not that big of a deal to add what with LTN and everything. What well, we don't even need LTN out of here. Um, but yeah, I think I think I won't bother with rail in Stardust, and maybe if we are still playing this save to the point where we start exploiting Melancholia for Aquatite, um, maybe then uh, maybe we'll use rail that time. Okay. Um, I completely forgot about those two uh, Vitamelange planets that we were clearing out. How's that going? I see a distinct lack of biters up in the northwest corner. How much power are we pumping into this? I think it's these two. Yep. So what's this? 21 gigawatts of injectors each at 50%. So 10 gigawatts times two. Uh, two beams of 10 gigawatt power. Why doesn't it focus on here? I'm just trying to jump to where the beams actually are. I think I have to zoom in more for the map to show me. It's actually kind of a big planet when you really look at it. Uh, but yeah, once we finish clearing this out, uh, we're going to have a few UPS back. Same goes for Irene. Uh, Irene is not cleared just yet. Oh, it might be. I don't think so, but there are still hostiles. Yeah, I don't... I thought it would jump to where the beam is if we do this, but apparently not. Kind of hard to find it. Yeah. 
kind of very hard to find it. But we're almost there. We'll be able to delete surface on Irene soon. It's a long road, indeed. My Nalvis finally became biter free, so I trimmed it. File size dropped 100 meg. Yes, indeed. 21 seconds till we are personally at Stardust. Um, did we get... We actually built most of this already. The bots are looking a bit confused, probably because... No, we've got storage space. Why are the bots... Oh. Oh, the superchargers are sucking up all the power. Okay. Um, I could probably switch these off as well. It's a pity we can't circuit control the shield projectors or just have them switch off when we're anchored. I guess with combat overhaul you wouldn't necessarily want the shield projectors uh, switched off if we're on a surface that isn't flying through space. But yeah, circuit control would be good. Um, we've actually already got our beam receiver. So let's point these four over there. And that is warming up nice and quickly. Fantastic. Noticed one of your bots doing a bit of repair just then. Really? Like out at Stardust? It is possible an, a, a meteor landed here somewhere. On your ship. Oh. That's surprising. Where was that? Let's anchor. Uh, let's just land next to the construction ship. A wall. Okay. Deep Space Catalog 4 is at 99%. Very nice. Can I... There we go. Alright, so we've got... I was going to say plenty of power now, but apparently not. Probably because this is still charging. It's very, very greedy when it's recharging. Probably doesn't have to be, to be honest. Usually the bots just spend like a nanosecond there. These bots are confused as well. Alright, let's grab some scaffolding. I'll fly over there personally. Let me in. Let me in! Don't auto trash the scaffolding. The right hand corner below where you were. Okay. I was going to place this myself, but the bot's already on it. Alright, that should allow those bots to go back, I would imagine. It's making it very awkward to see where all this meets. Alright, so that is one robo network. Oh, and the bots placed the belts as soon as I got here. Um, why are they hovering though? Oh, because this robo-port hasn't recharged. Jeez. Alright, um, we 
probably don't have to worry about that. 1.2 gigawatts. Is this thing recharging? Yes it is. There's your problem. They're all confused, indeed. Where's my scaffolding? Here we go. Let's move the rocks. And add some scaffolding over here. Funny how the uh, Naquatite gets like re randomized with the look of it when we do this. And probably up here as well. See how this fits together. Mm -hmm. We're going to need like at least one drill over here. Probably that one is a bit redundant, to be honest. Um, this feels a bit unnecessary. If we move all of these over one tile... I think that's a bit better. We've got full... Oh! We get some free ice out of this. Well then. Um, we're gonna have to... We're gonna have to filter it out anyway. So... A hundred... Uh, uh, how much... It's not a hundred thousand, because these are overlapping. If I don't give it sulfuric acid and it's got na access to naquatite and ice, what happens? Let's let's find out. Little gap in the scaffold. Little gap in the scaffold. Oh yeah. How are we at exactly 0% for this? Deep Space Science Pack 3. Okay, we're not. I thought it, we didn't have the resource or something. Um, how big is this patch? 358k times 2.7. Uh... Almost a million. I don't particularly want to be trying to store a million ice. If... Hmm. This is actually kind of tricky. Five thousand stacks of water ice. I could count exactly how much water ice we're going to get from here. It would be good to have a tool for this. Let's say it's like average five thousand times 17 times 2.7 
that's still going to give us a quarter of a million ice just from this. I could have the drills that are going to drill up ice start and stop based on how much ice we have in storage. But then we're go but then we're not getting naquitite. Um We would need 105 chests. I think that's actually the easier solution. 105 chests for ice. Um, do we have 105 storage chests laying around? I've got 50 here. I can handcraft 12. I don't think our handcrafting is going to be that relevant. We should have at least 50 in here. Uh, oh, we've got tons. Alright. So we need, like, let's call it 120 or something. What's a square number that goes... Uh, well, 10 by 10 is 100. 121, 11 by 11. Okay. We'll have, like, 11 by 11, if we can. Right about here, perhaps? This seems a little bit overkill, but what can you do? Uh, let's go with filter... And we'll just have this belt. Water, ice. Filter off to the right. Can we still fit this here? Not quite. scaffolding and that should do it Put a supercharger right about here. What's what's going to be our throughput of ice from this? It's probably not that high. Maybe a regular RoboPort is fine. Whatever. This will do. A Veldak? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Ice in water to steam? Yeah, but we can't consume... We're not going to cons uh, be consuming it as fast as we're going to be mining it. Down to 20 UPS? We've been there before. Guitars? Immo? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Have you tested my balancer on your spheres? Uh, not just yet. I'd be keen to do it on stream, though, if, uh, uh, if you don't mind. I'll, I'll need to jump into the super editor, though, to play with that. So, it'll, so maybe when we take a break, I'll load that save. 
I want your balancer for chat, please, Veldak. Oh, as in chat, please, Factorio. Yes. Alright. Uh, so I th think we're good here, except that we haven't done piping. Let's move this up one tile. Yeah, we can't fit this down here. Um, I'll want to remove this before... Before I figure out where we're fitting our spaceship in too much detail. Um, but actually... Yeah, about here is the obvious choice. So sulfuric acid... Oh, we could actually have this... Off by one. No. All right, so either here or here or here is where the sulfuric acid pipe is going to be. Um, we could definitely put some storage here, in which case this would be a nice fit. Um, yeah. Oh, and we also want a pump, of course, but this, this will go further out this way. Just putting this here so we have an idea where it'll be. Uh, we will be needing piping going all the way down this way. And I should finish this mine before I figure out where I want to do this corner. Yeah, yeah, uh, Veldex thing is on the Discord. The Arcosphere Balancer. It's really quite clever. Using a square. Basically, um, it calculates how many of each type of arcosphere we would have after doing each recipe, uh, with zero as the average. If we've got, like, negative one lambda, it means lambda would be one below the average. Uh, and if we've got, like, positive two zeta, zeta would be a two above the average. We take the sum of all of those, we do each to the power of two, uh, and that gives us a, a number that is, it's an absolute value, and the further away from zero it is, the less desirable the recipe is. And then we go from there. Very succinct. Alright, let's go with... Um, this piping. That doesn't line up, does it? How many tiles is this? Exactly nine. Fantastic. Uh, why don't we do some fibers? Because it'll block the belt. The whole thing is... Well, I should probably check. I, sh I should probably put beacons down before I make this conclusion. Um, but I'm pretty sure the whole thing for both of these is going to be less than one belt. Also, let me just be a little bit lazy and copy-paste this beacon. And 
this one needs to cover these ones. That's actually pretty convenient. We'll do... We need some power before we can rate calculate this. How's our energy coming along? Uh, we're actually almost a fifth of the way to having enough heat to run this thing. Uh, let's see. Pylon substation about here. And about here. I've got plenty of power already. Alright, so we are getting... 20 necrotite per second. Yeah, we don't have we don't have to worry even a little bit about how we shape our belt throughput here. Although no, I was going to say it could matter if we put everything on one side of the belt, but we're actually just slightly short of even that. So I could actually even do this. And we'll do a little lane balance. go scaffolding right about here. That's a cool way of doing it. Uh, which was that? Don't forget the beacons for the mines, indeed. Infamous and inconspicuous leopard, nice name. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You missed some underground pipes top right. All right. Posted another blueprint. New one has the brain and storage consumers. Nice. Just use robot for mining is fine. Uh, it has to cover a bit of a distance here. Robots are more effective the shorter the distance is. And vice versa. Oh, that's pipe. Um... Alright, so that is belt. And go. Oh, they're doing undergrounds automatically. I need to go down to this corner as well. That's very weird how Supercomputer 4 is not getting any research. What's happening? Uh, we need 4, 4, and 3. We've got all of our 4s. And we just happened to run out of Deep Space Science 3 just after getting our last research done. That's a little bit surprising. We do have another 252 over here, but that doesn't meet the threshold. Okay. Uh, so, piping as well. There's actually a not insignificant distance here. Um, we only need bots to come down here 
in the event of repairs. Um, can't actually see where this would reach. Yeah, I think I'll just mostly use radar construction pylons to reach down here. Oh, let's use this belt. And run. The bots are looking a bit confused again. if I... Oh, I just ran out of scaffolding? Okay. I remember your transport ship supplying sulfuric acid to Naquim Mining. Yes, it does. Noxy Way Gaming. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, that's maybe a bit more scaffolding that I need right now. Why not set up multiple anchors? Um, because these mines are just close enough that I just want to, like, have one anchor here. Although, maybe... Nah. Right, so, uh, radar pylon substation, right about here, and we'll bring this down as far as possible. Um, the bots are probably, uh, not probably, they're definitely going to try and travel in a straight line down here, actually. So maybe I should just... Maybe the roboports I should put down should be like... Uh, it's fine. I'll just put down a roboport for every other radar construction pylon. Should be more than sufficient. Oh, that's, that's, that's a little unfortunate. Can we... Uh, maybe I could just move all of these up tile? No. No, see where you're gaming. Go bonk, okay. Uh, radar construction pylons don't need to be on scaffold, do they? Oh yeah, I forgot. Whoops. Okay. So we can just casually put this all the way down here. Which means actually this probably shouldn't be here. That's going to be a good fit. Very nice. Okay. Um, so pipe. It's actually one tile too high. Let me 
me just do this part manually. Interesting point, pollution calculation takes a significant amount of time at the end game of SE. Totally disabled pollution saves me about 10 UPS. Maybe it'll help you too. I am seriously considering it. I didn't know you could totally disable pollution, uh, especially after starting the game. Um, pollution? Don't think it's going to be under interface. Uh, mod settings. Do I need to use a like a console command to cheat? Pretty sure you need console commands. Okay. We could. We'll do it as an experiment. Uh, right after I save the game. Before I jump into uh, uh, the sandbox mode, I'll have a look at Valdak's um, build after a break. Um, and if the UPS is, if it's an, if it's, it's, if it's a significant enough improvement, we'll go with that. Is i5 24 12400F good CPU? Good question. Uh, CPU isn't the bottleneck that we have here. Should I bother with a pipe? I mean a pump? One off. The rate of consumption for sulfuric acid is going to be very slow. But it's a long way to go. 15 per second? Okay, yeah, that's... I think we'll be fine. Probably. Um, let's see where we're going to put this. Wait a sec. It's... Uh, yeah, we still need a pylon to make that reach. Um, it's a little hard to see if... Yeah, we don't have a uh, power pole connection here. There we go. That should be fine. I just tried to do a dash with a double tap. i playing a bit of Terraria. Uh, and we'll do one more of these. Actually... Yeah, I think we can do one more of these before we do another RoboPort. Pipe doesn't do that, does it? No, it doesn't. I'd be shocked if that wasn't that was an option all this time. The effort we're putting into this, maybe it would have been better to have one more anchor. Um, we've got the wire connection, good. a good fit. Rip. You know what? Let's put in a pump, just because it fits so well.
Okay. Nav set is easier for this part. It's a little hard to see on the map how these robo networks are connected because of the radar construction pylons. You can check official voice key. There is a console command that disables pollution and removes all the existing ones. Oh. And that still has a power pole connection. Uh, let's remove these ones so that we're not getting confused. wish the radar construction pylons had just like one uh, one port for charging robots even if it was really slow not again oh no this is a consistent pattern over here. Take that. Should be connected. Yes, good. Fantastic. And then we can just put a robo port wherever. Okay. Uh, piping can go here, I suppose. No. Uh, four tiles, the worst number of tiles. Need belt for that one off minor? Oh yeah, true. And now I... Uh, now I want it to go into the balancer as well. Alright, we'll do a long one. Split. One goes straight. One gives the opportunity to switch sides. And then merge. Uh, we can also make it a bit neater, kind of. a lane balancer. I guess we don't need to do that like that. And if we prioritize this part, uh, it becomes a belt balancer as well. Which, come to think of it, um, if we're only getting like 20 per second... Uh, we're getting slightly, slightly more than half a belt. Yeah, come to think of it, uh... Well, no, our consumer up here is going to want to take from one side of the belt most of the time. But it should be way more than enough to take everything off the belt. I mean, it definitely will be. So yeah, we don't need a lane balancer here, just a 
Just a little belt balancer. Let's do it up there. Okay. Sulfuric acid appears to be connected. Get rid of it. Actually, no. I'm going to stop that right there. I'll use that for a test. Make sure the bots can get all the way down here and back. This is significantly longer than I realized it is. sense of scale uh, can get a bit thrown by the wayside sometimes. Oh no. Actually the construction pylons do have charging points, they are just disabled by default. You can enable them in mod settings. Construction pylon charging points. Startup settings cannot be changed while a game is running. Sad. I'll definitely be using those next time. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. Yeah, I would I would much prefer even if it took a long time. Uh if I could just lay out all of this at once with radar construction pylons and then just forget about it. Um, that'd be pretty good. It can be changed. You should enable and reload game. Eh? Um, alright. I think... Well, first of all, let's get rid of all this. Don't deconstruct the ships. Alright, and we'll run our little test over here. Uh, we will be needing a couple of Roboports. At least one just to pick up bots and stuff. I want a supercharger near all of these chests. Our ships are going to be anchoring right about here. No, here. It's a pretty good fit. Or we could probably do a little bit better here. So I need to put the anchor down here-ish. The clamp, that is. I think it, it was either here or here. There we go. Perfect. Can I... Oh, I actually can. Pull the tiles out from underneath it. Alright, so this is where our logic is going to be. 
Uh, we need... Oh, let me just copy this. It's probably a good thing I didn't put this where a ship could have clamped. You know what? We can allow a ship to land here already. Oh, I thought there would be one waiting. Stardust. We might actually need some more ships already. Okay. Let's arrange that. I'll just wait till these uh, floors are put down. The game cannot be running. You need to change the startup settings from the main menu. Oh. So even though it's a startup setting, I could change it now? Alright, so that's going to be our next ship. Um, how long until one of these ships clamp here? Well, it's hard to say because Stardust 2... Uh, Stardust 2 could clamp at any of these locations as long as they're not occupied. This one's not occupied. This one is, and this one is not. Oh, we are very much bottlenecked on ships for the moment. That was a sudden change. Alright, so we need green wire. Whoops. Has a signal of fill up these chests with necrotite. Red wire gives signals to the console, which include destination Nalvis, and if Nacrotite greater than X, spaceship launch. We calculate whether the spaceship would launch based on... Uh, everything that is in the logistic network minus what's in these chests. Aquatite times negative one. Output Aquatite. Uh, and we make sure that this is the only place in the logistic network where we put Aquatite. Also, I don't know about this uh, without a balanced loader. We could do it without a combinator. If we just set all of these to say everything equals zero. Wait, no, that's uh that's the opposite of what we need because it's true if there are no inputs. Anything greater than zero. And the last one, read hand contents. No condition. So that's an easy soft balancer. I want this roboport as far away from where we're going to be loading as possible, so that as many bots use the supercharger as possible. By restart, I mean exit the game, start game, not a playthrough restart. Yes. 
Startup setting does not mean map start, it means game start. Today I learned. It should be the startup of the application. Okay. We'll try that uh, when I take a break as well. What time is it? We've been going for 3 hours 16. Probably take a break pretty soon, actually. Um, are these bots... What are these bots doing? They're trying to bring scaffolding. What? What? Oh, they're trying to get back with scaffolding. No? Hold on. I didn't even mark this for deconstruction yet. So, what are they doing? They're coming back here to recharge. And then? These shouldn't be the same robot network. But maybe... Maybe they're trying to come here because it's the only storage chest? It's easier to see on the map what they're doing. I can't see how recharged they are. We've got no electricity. Wait, what? Uh-oh. Yeah, that's a problem, actually. Uh... That does not bode well for our testing. There we go. Electricity, go burr. Roboport. Oh wow. Oh wow, look at that accumulator charge go. Oh no. Um, I think it's because we're charging a bunch of robo-ports, not to mention a super- at least- at least one supercharger. There we go. Okay. So, charge. Charge. Would you kindly charge? Okay, yeah, they don't- they don't have anywhere to go, which is what I would have thought originally, but I don't know why we caught them moving like that. Um, let's just put down a unfiltered storage chest here. They should start moving. Good. And they'll probably get to here somewhere and then go to the nearest charger. We're about almost half empty now, actually. I didn't need quite this many robo-ports along the way, um, but that's fine. We also need... Oh. We also need to put some point defenses down. Uh, which I don't have in my inventory. Point D... And ammo, please. Not sure how they could now. Uh, what do you mean? I, I put down a storage chest that didn't have a filter on it. There were no storage chests that were unfiltered in this, this robot network right here. This one's separate now. All right, did I get... Oh. No, I didn't. Greetings, Night Dancer. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, do we not have logistic... Oh, there we go. Did I just get stuck? Nope, we're fine. Alright. 
let's figure out where we're putting our media point defenses. Uh, I'm thinking maybe a couple around each radar construction pylon. And we can take advantage of... They took my scaffolding! No! hundred and fifty times destroyed things. Uh, yeah, we're kind of a little bit energy glaving a planet that has biters on it and some stuff that we don't care about at this point. Um, I've been meaning to clear out Tolibai for a long time now. It's got a bunch of old stuff that I've wanted to get rid of for ages. Um, but yeah, we've got Uh, is this it? Yes. We've got this uh, energy glaive chasing the biters. But it doesn't mind if it runs over some solar panels as well. We use a mod that lets you pass over tubes. Pass over tubes? Do you mean, uh, like, this uh, squeak three. Yes. Okay. Um, we're gonna need to do this. Put down a couple of point defenses. Actually, it needs to be a bit further away. Can I still move it? No. Uh, probably easier if I put the chests down first. Alright, and then we have... Underneath the... Like so. Alright, let's blueprint that so we don't have to do it all again. And I'll just put that here. With yes, I meant to answer... Okay, fair enough. Passing through the pipes as part of SE? Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, what's our coverage like? Alright, we need to put it at the Rogo ports as well. I'll make this a radar construction pylon so that we can sort this out here. Quest a chest. Underground. Is that going to be enough? Theoretically? Let's find out. Alright, where's that blueprint? Nice and easy. Come on. Off. 
Why not simply use the big guns to protect it all? Seems easier to me. Yeah, it would have been if we started out that way in the long run. But I didn't really foresee making this many mines at one location. Might be enough coverage. Might have to add some around the robo ports. I think it would take if if we do need more coverage right here. I suspect it would take a very very long time to find that out the hard way. All right, so let's put some media point defenses right about here. Pretend that's why we had the scaffolding here in the first place. That should probably be more than enough. They do all get to fire four times each, after all. I think the individual shot accuracy is lower. 50% accuracy, that's actually really bad, but four shots for each of them. Underground pipe slash belts turn into space magic once in space. Yes. Just pretend they use magnets or something. And don't worry about how not everything on the belt is magnetic. It's fine. Alright, where would be the neatest spot for our point defences over here? Um, considering the range, I think we should have some on both sides. Give me that chest. Now we're just waiting for a ship, I think. Um, why, why did we get a little bit of ice and then nothing else? Probably because this works one of the ways that I thought it would. It's probably going to switch between ice and nequitite kind of randomly. I hope it doesn't cost us any productivity bonus because of that. Oh, and we need to add a an ice machine somewhere. I think I'll just put it way up here. Um, and I'll skip the pump this time. We can just use inserter to decide whether we need more ice. Water less than 12,000. Oh, not, not 120k. Actually 20k. It should be more than safe enough. Uh, melt ice into water. Request. Actually, just fill it up. And then we'll put some... bots in the network. What are we at? 3.1k heat. 
going to be relatively soon that we can, uh, that this place can power itself. Although it is interesting that um, as long as we don't have sulfuric acid, we can't get ice from these miners with any consistency. Um, I could set, I would have to put it all the way over here. I could put a couple of miners that are only going to do ice, but I would have to tell them to stop if we're getting full. I forget... No, wait, 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 wait. 358k. I think we calculated, even with productivity modules, to contain all of the ice in that in these chests, right? Um... Yeah, yeah, I think we can fit literally all of that ice in here. So why don't we just... I'm going to need to add some scaffolding over there. Do we have any construction bots? We do. Uh, I can actually just add some scaffolding like so. Although they will take their sweet time getting over there. They would stop anyway if the output is full. Yeah, uh, and we don't want the naquitite to stop because the ice output is full. The methane ice will immediately fill the belt first Nakwa. Yep. The was up. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's why we've got enough storage here to contain literally all of this ice. Uh, I guess... Oh, Stardust 2 isn't even here yet. ETA three and a half minutes. If we're very lucky, it's going to come here first. I doubt it. How's our new ship looking? Uh, it's almost ready to go. 4.5 thousand heat. Antimatter is mostly full. Plenty of water. Sulfuric acid is full. What number are we up to? 14? That's a lot. Just for one resource. The stack size is just too small. Bots are almost there. Are they going to run out of energy before they get just over to the end? Yes. They actually don't completely run out of energy before they go back for a recharge. Alright, so if we put these two here... Um, really? Was that the limit? Of our, that was all of the scaffolding that we had in storage. Whoops. Guess it would have been easier if we just flew over here. Let's pick this up. We don't need to test that the bots can get all the way there and back anymore. Alright, so I'll aim these two so that they don't pick up any Naquitite, and we can just do this. Apparently I don't have any big drills. 
Uh, can I handcraft them? I can. This will be easier. Is it not powered? There we go. So even if a ship doesn't come here in a while, this will be able to power itself indefinitely as soon as we reach 5,000 degrees. Alright. I think that is almost everything. Uh, let's connect these robo networks up again so that uh, the media point defense ammo we probably... Yes. The media point defense ammo we have will get distributed. If you turn the miners around, you could fit two more. Um... True... Yeah, yeah, let's do that. I would have to move these back a tile. And then a bit more belt. Could make it three more, but... How long is that going to last? Alright. Should make sure that the, um, the belt is connected all the way as well. How's our new ship looking? Uh, 5.4k degrees. Um, that basically is, means it's got 500 degrees of heat. Or it will have in a second. That it can use for energy. Um, so we'll give it a little bit longer. Before we send it here. But that said. Uh, Stardust 2 for example. Oh, it's actually down to 9.6k. Yeah, that caution is not unwarranted. I would say. Alright, I think now is pretty good timing for a little break. Got plenty of life support. Uh, let's fire up some words on stream. might just jump into my spider so that the life support is totally irrelevant. When save equals scum is a bad word. Wait, what? Good luck, Veldak, indeed. Uh, let me just mute this thing. Oop. Autopilot. And go. And we'll fire up the old LTN screensaver. Alright, Words on Stream is going to start in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes, and uh, good luck and have fun.
Fantastic. One more. Okay, let's continue, shall we, with some space exploration, and uh, this is Veldak's clever little solution to the problem of figuring out which Arcosphere folding or inversion recipe to run. Well done, Whiskers, indeed. All the points. Many points. Um, so what we have here, uh, I think these two combinators might not be necessary, just because each times one output each, each put one out, uh, times one output each, they're just synchronizing these two signals. I don't think it's going to matter if these... Uh, take two ticks to catch up. Um, but basically what we're getting is our count of Arcospheres. Those two are there to have all signals in sync, yes. Um, so what we're doing is getting our count of Arcospheres. Um, getting a total for all of them. Dividing by 8, so this Arcosphere signal right here represents the average. Um, and again, these two are just passing through the same signals that were already on this. So we've got our count for each type of Arcosphere, plus the average as just vanilla Arcosphere. Um, what I've got set up here is just a little... A bunch of constant combinators with one of a type of Arcosphere, so that we can test this easily. So these are all five each. We definitely don't need to be running any uh, recipes right now. Um, and what we do with these signals is uh, for each different recipe that we can run, we use a constant combinator and a little bit of math to give us an idea of what we're going to end up with after the recipe is run and then decide if, if that is worth doing. 
So for the Arcosphere folding recipe uh, number one, we put in Arcosphere Lambda and Omega. So we have negative one for each of those. And we output Arcosphere C and Arcosphere Theta. So each of those get a positive one. That signal gets added to what's coming out of here with the totals for each plus the average. And then we say... Come to think of it... Oh yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, so we put all of that in here. Each to the power of 2 output signal 1. Um, so because we're using power of 2, uh, negatives will come out as positives. And because it's a square, um, the higher, uh, if, if something is going to be further away from the average, um, that's like represents a higher value. Um, it, it's weighted more heavily. Current status is on green wire and recipe run is on red wire. They combine on combinator input. Yes. Um, so what we would end up with after running this recipe, since all of these are equal right now, uh, it's exactly what we're putting into the constant combinator. Relative to the average, we would get plus one C and theta, minus one lambda and omega. Uh, and that would represent four points worth of being away from everything being totally balanced. Um, if we go even lower on Omega, um, oh, I guess the average changed, yeah. Uh, hmm. Should I maybe bump up one of these so that so that the average stays the same? Okay, so the average is still five. Um, we would end up with C two above average. Wait, what? Oh, C is six. Wait. Oh yeah, derp, derp. Uh, let's pick one that's not relevant to this recipe. How about phi? Or I could literally just force plus one on the average over there. Alright, so... Phi is plus one. Yeah, let's... Let's simplify things a little bit here. We're going to pretend the average stays at 5. So we would end up with plus 1 C, plus 1 theta, minus 1 lambda, and minus 2 uh, omega from the average. Um, and that gives us a value of 7 for like how undesirable this recipe is to run, basically. Um, so it's 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4, 2 to the power of 2, uh, which is 7. Um, this recipe here is basically nothing. Like, th th this is what... Uh, this is what would happen... I mean, th this gives us the value of if we don't do anything. So currently, uh, signal 0 um, has a value of 1. We have one arcosphere that is 1 away from the average. Um, and the lower this value is, the more desirable uh, that outcome is. Uh, and if we compare all of these other ones against uh, the 0 signal... Um, that's interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why we have, uh, for each of these combinators, it says everything has to be greater than or equal to 4 if we're going to output 4. Um, 
So you can see all these inputs here. We've got recipe nine would be the worst one, uh, the worst one to run right now. We would end up with plus one for lambda c epsilon uh, and phi, and minus one for zeta theta gamma and minus two. Um, for Omega. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8, 9, 10, 11 from Omega. Um, it's very, very succinct. Each combinator compares a recipe to all other recipes and enables itself if it's the lowest number available. Yep, so if there is a tie for, like, the worst two recipes to run, and they're equal to or better than not running any recipe at all, um, then that's what this thing is going to output, because all of these have to pass through. Everything has to be greater than or equal to whatever. What is A? Oh, right, 0 is no recipe, 9 is inverting and A is the other inverting. Yeah, I'm not seeing a different signal that I would necessarily pick to represent not running a recipe. Okay, so why don't we try applying this? Um, I've already set up the recipes here. It's going to be one, recipe one, recipe two, recipe three, recipe four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, and this one up here, zeta and so on is recipe 9, and this will be recipe A, and we can just barely fit them all around uh, this large container that comes with space exploration. I just continued in hex format, fair enough. Um, I would love it if there was room to do, uh, oh, there is, yeah, yeah, I remember talking about this, Eldak. We could also set it up so that we never waste any inputs, so we have, like, Zeta, Theta, Gamma, Omega. Gamma Omega. Uh, and I guess in this case we could output directly to here. Um, we don't have room to output straight to... For, for four of these recipes we don't have room to output directly back to the container, but we can just put those in a purple chest. So this is lambda C epsilon And phi. Um, lambda omega. Theta epsilon. C 
C gamma. Gamma. Uh, C zeta. Lambda theta. Uh, epsilon omega. I'm seeing some patterns here, perhaps. Oh yeah, look at this. What a coincidence. If this works out the way I think it might. Zeta phi. Phi gamma. Oops. So we've got lambda lambda, omega omega, theta theta, epsilon epsilon. And I bet if I had done these in a slightly different order. We've got Xi Xi, Zeta Zeta, Gamma Gamma, Phi Phi. Hmm. Felt like I was on the verge of discovering some pattern there that made it all make a bit more sense. But perhaps not. Alright, so... I think... All we need to do, actually, is connect all of these inputs. And they're going to have conditions like signal 1 greater than 0. Ugh, I kind of wish I'd gone and copy-pasted a condition across all of these before I started. We're going to have to swap that to being greater than... Wait, let's do it this way. Oh, I can't put a constant in here on the left, can I? Okay, I see how it is. I could always feed it a signal that's necessarily empty, but I don't think I'll do that. Uh, 2 greater than 0. Nine greater than 0. Uh, 3. Signal 3, that is. 4. Uh, 8. Let's stop this flashing, that's a little bit distracting. There we go. What's this? A? And we already did 8. This one is 7. Give it some speed modules. Um, without activating cheats, I can do it this way. Can we fit all of this under one beacon? Uh, yes if I move one of those constant combinators that I was using. 
for a label. Okay. Um, what am I doing? Modules. So how many ticks does it take to run one of these recipes? Uh, let's see. We'll need a timer. Inventory is a little bit of a mess. on these two. Um, how do we start a timer once this happens? We need a, sort of a latch. Uh, let's see. If anything greater than zero, output one green signal. Connect to itself, never mind the latch. Read hand contents pulse and enabled condition uh, arcosphere greater than zero. And we won't read both of them. Well, I guess it doesn't matter actually. So then we're just going to connect that to a constant combinator. I could have just connected this straight to here as well, but I want to be absolutely sure that it's like X ticks from when the inserter swings. So we're going to go Arcosphere. Once I turn that on, they're going to input. And once this detects something in the inserter's hands, um, we're going to get uh, we're going to get the constant for our timer, and then. I think we do the same thing here. Unconditional. Read hand contents pulse. If anything is greater than zero, output negative one T. So that'll stop it from receiving a net positive of T. It'll just T'll just go round in circles. Um, this is fine. Each times negative one, I'll put each, or we could go t times negative one, it doesn't really matter. Alright, so this should give us almost exactly how many ticks uh, 82. That's really quite fast. That's really, really fast. Okay, then. Oh, this, this takes longer, though, doesn't it? A hundred seconds. I think we just go by the quicker recipes. So let's say every hundred ticks we pulse this into here. Throw together a little timer. Uh, I 
guess I'll make that a green wire. If T is less than 100, that might not be exactly 100 ticks, but it's close enough. Output everything input count. Oh wait, if... hold on. Uh, what am I doing here? T needs to be connected to its own input. Alright, so that's gonna... And, and then we're just gonna have when t equals 1. If t equals 1, output everything. Yep, that looks like it's working. Uh, we need some purple chests to output this slot. Oh, I should take into account... How many ticks does it take for this to swing? It was like... It was 82 ticks from when we picked this up to when this picked up the output. Um, it's like 2 point something swings per second. 864 over 360, 2.4 swings per second. 60 ticks over 2.4 is 25 ticks. So I should actually increase this just a little bit. Let's say 120 just to be safe. I'm sure 110 would have been fine. So that gives it time to output both of these. Although it won't actually give it time for the bots to bring this back. Hmm. Also, there's only one spot on each side that we could do robot input output into this cargo landing pad. Because there's more than five types of arcospheres, we can't simply um, have a filtered blacklist to make sure all of these are available. How so, like, getting these back into here is obviously pretty straightforward. Um, but how do we decide which ones to make available to the robot network? My latest blueprint in Discord shows how I did it. Do you have the episodes of this series before Ep 46? Uh, I apologize, I do not. Sorry. Uh, Inklink, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Two chests each for four different types and blacklists. Um, then how do we get the recycled stuff to come back here? Did I miss anything else in chat? Okay. Um, I might have to use a few combinators just to get like at least one of each in here. Just because, and it's literally only because we can only fit five on the blacklist. Uh, so we need to read from the chest. What is that unknown key? 
Logistic train stop lamp control. Okay. You can go. Uh, we'll need to use a white list instead of a black list for this. So... Uh, I think we need a constant combinator. Where are my combinators? Give to me all of the combinators, please. Okay. So we'll have negative... Let's start with one. Negative one for each type. Oh wait, we want whitelist. So we're just going to multiply what's in the chest by a negative? Output each. And then let's say we have one of each of these. Uh, we have a positive value for what we want to pick up on a constant combinator on this side. So, Arcosphere... And that gives us a total of... Zero for the ones that we've already got. And we could add larger numbers here if we want more than one of each type of Arcosphere in this chest. So set filters whitelist. And then over here we should request at least one of each. Uh, I should also get I should also get out of this giant robot network with infinite resources uh, for testing reasons. Okay. So we're gonna need a Roboport. Let's put it up here. So how many... Okay, this is the entire logistic network for now. So that just goes in unconditionally. Give me a give me an inserter. And then All right. So now we need to throw a few Arcospheres into the system. Uh, why don't we just do this? One of each. Copy that a few times. That'll do, I guess. And then we're just going to turn those into purple chests. It's taking longer to move that than I thought it would. Probably because these are only requesting one of each. It's keeping up with the inserter anyway. Okay, and then we read from here, 
let's get rid of the fake count. And go. Uh oh. And go. What do we have? Exactly 12 of everything. Alright. Uh, why don't we do a display as well before we get started here? So we're going to do... Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then... One, two, three, four... Alright, so if something or other is less than zero, less than negative one, whoops, less than negative two, less than negative three, less than negative four, And then, give me some lights. Not logistic train stop input, although those do work, oddly enough. Do I not have construction bots? No, I do. Oh no, these are logistic train stop inputs. No! Alright, let's start over, I guess. Eight of those, five in each direction, these ones will be unconditional, um, and then we have Arcosphere, whatever, less than zero, less than negative one, less than negative two, less than negative three, less than negative four, greater than zero, one, two, three, Wait, what? One, zero, one, three. Rip. Two and four. Fantastic. Copy those across. Whoa, oh no. Copy those across. And then we just need to change. Uh, change which arcosphere we're looking at. With way too many clicks. But if we don't do this first, uh, it's kind of, kind of a lot harder to see what's going on without testing. this directly, that's a bit easier. Epsilon, 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 Epsilon. Bye. 
That's Epsilon. Apple Tunnel incoming? Yeah. We're almost there. thing about this setup is we don't have to add anything other than those lights themselves. For the moment we have the low average omegas. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh that's the wrong output for reading that. Whoops. Uh, is it this one? Yeah, that just adds the average to it. So this is the same count. Oh no, this is it here. Okay. There we go. So everything is above average except Omega, which... We don't actually get a signal for? Wait. Omega has no signal. Does that mean Omega's average right now? No, there's nothing. Uh, I think it doesn't account for there being no Omegas. Yeah, there we go. That's interesting. Hmm. If there's no signal for Omega, it thinks it's at zero. Uh, it thinks it's average. That's the only trouble with this one. Alright, so... I think once we link this up... Here we go. We are trying to balance. That's looking pretty good. It's looking very good, actually. Is it going to settle, or are we going to get a bit of a loop? A loop is okay, it's not really a problem. You can see which recipes it thinks it should do at all times right here. So zero means no recipe. Oh, there yeah, we got there. That did not take very long at all. That's brilliant, Veldak. Yes, indeed. Here's Mike. Good to see you again. Well, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, why don't we jam in the rest of these Omegas? How did you fix your UPS? This is a sandbox save. It's it's a separate save. It rethinks next recipe every time storage changes, but it doesn't mean machines will run exactly at that time. Yes. Whoa. Did we just get everything happening at once? I mean, it's because these ones uh, take a lot longer. Yeah. 
And there we go. Oh. We had everything perfectly balanced, but then... Uh, inversion finished. Yeah. It can't account for recipes that are in progress. That would be very difficult. But, I mean, literally es literally every recipe, uh, every type of Arcosphere is on average or plus or minus one. That's really good. I did a speed up, but I craft all recipes all the time. I only output from machine when it needs to run a recipe. Basically, first correction is instant. Only output from machine. Ah, okay. So you've got a bunch of Arcospheres sitting idle, like the opposite what I've, uh, the opposite of what I've done here, where I make sure we don't have, like a lambda sitting in here. You've basically always got these machines saturated, and then you just output when you need to. Instead of controlling input, I control output. Yep, that would get rid of the delay. And as long as you have enough Arcospheres, um, it would definitely be worth... Like, this setup would be better when you're starting out. Um, when you had when you have hardly any Arcospheres. Um, but once you have enough... I mean, that would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Uh, 6, 8 plus... So 48, I think... Plus 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 24. If you've got 72 spare Arcospheres, that's kind of a lot. Uh, in that case, it would be way, way, way better to keep the machine saturated and just output. Uh, output when you want to rebalance. How do you extract spheres from the system in this setup? Just request whatever's needed. Yeah, so we've got... Um, normally what I would do... Uh, if we've got, like, up to five things... Give me a filter. If we've got up to five things that we want in... Let me, get, let me just get some steel chests as well. Let's say we have up to five things we want to keep in this chest with certain limits. Um, the easiest thing we can do is simply set filters blacklist on this filter inserter. And it's going to put... oh, I forgot. Hold on. Don't put more than five types of thing in here. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, we don't have enough of these. Uh, five. All right, so it's going to pick up a stack, or three, that is, of something in this chest. It's going to put it in this chest. We're going to be reading contents. And as soon as it receives that signal, uh, it's going to be added to the filter list, and since it's on blacklist, it's not going to pick up anymore. If we want to pick up about 10 logistic bots instead of just 1 to 3, um, we can add a constant combinator here, and we'll say logistic bot negative 9 as opposed to negative 10. We want nine additional logistic bots. Um, so once the signal of logistic bots between what's read in the chest and this constant combinator is net positive, uh, logistic bots are going to be on this filter and we're not going to pick any more up. Unfortunately this won't work for the Arcospheres because we only have room for five filters. So what we did instead is 
multiply everything in this chest by negative one. Um, feed that to this uh, set filters whitelist. And then if we want more than one of each type of arcosphere. Uh, sorry. We have to start with a positive signal for everything we want this to pick up. So uh, if we just want one of each in here, we have a signal of one of each arcosphere. There is a slight problem with this in that uh, if we were missing any arcospheres entirely, uh, only the first five arbitrary filters would fit here. And it is possible to end up with a situation where this wouldn't pick anything up because it doesn't have room for the filters for what it does need to pick up. Uh, I think that theoretically could happen, but considering it's arcospheres and we're balancing them, um, it's not too likely. Um, so yeah, we make those ones available for the logistic network. Speed is a trade-off for memory usage, memory in this case being more spheres. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I had a similar solution, but instead of a big chest, I had a few storage chests per sphere type. I think it considered the requested spheres... Uh, since I calculated with available spheres in the logistic network. Yes. Yeah, I used the logistic network as well. Um, it, also, it obviously has some issues with the bots having to take time to move stuff around. Uh, and this is very responsive. Yeah, I might patch that into my game, but for today I'll focus on expanding that Aquatype. Revan, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We are getting some cycling here, even though we're not consuming any Arcospheres, um, but frankly I don't care. This is totally fine. As far as I'm concerned, any setup that doesn't run out of a sphere type is good enough. Yes, pretty much. That is the goal. But of course, it, it is fun to try out all sorts of different designs. There's no perfect design. They do have their pros and cons, no matter what you do. Not the flaming kind of fine. <laughs> We can fix that. Oh, vehicle flamethrower. Can I... Vehicle flamethrower cannot be used. Wait, 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 wait. I have a vehicle flame... Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Can we compare these? Are they the same... power? Minimum range 3... Range 9, shooting speed 60 per second. Oh, the regular flamethrower is better. That's a little disappointing. Well, there you go. The player can use a vehicle flamethrower. The vehicle one doesn't set stuff on fire, so it's kind of boring. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to our main game. But yeah, this is this is a very impressive solution. This looks like a, a lot of combinators up front, um, but then you realize that's everything. Like, for all of the folding and inversion recipes, and for the display, this is... This is all of the combinators that you need. Also, I would like to... It's probably going to be hard to even notice, but I would like to test my idea that... Um, that those two combinators are unnecessary.
yeah, I, I, it's very unlikely that like these two ticks, where the average is catching up, is going to make any serious difference. It would also, if we, if we do have this timer here, it would have to coincide exactly with this, which it won't because the recipe gets started at tick one, and we've got a few spare ticks after the recipe completes here as well. What can be changed there? Oh, never mind. Hey, Morpheus Cell. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Don't forget to change the radar pylon setting. Yes. Yes, let's try that right now. Alright, so quit game. Mods. Uh, I mean settings, mod settings. Pylon. Construction pylon charging points. Oh. I wasn't expecting Factorio to have to reload for that. Indeed. You can get rid of cycling if you let brain think only at regular intervals. Once interval finishes. Yep. Yeah, if I had synchronized... Oh, look at the cute little spiders. Uh, if I had synchronized... Let's jump back in here for a second. Actually, let's not. Space exploration. This isn't going to change what we just changed back, is it? I don't think so. What was I talking about? Alex Hudson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, if I had been a bit more careful with the timer and measured how long inversion takes and set the timer to a multiple that would be more appropriate to line up with that, um, we might have been able to avoid that cycling. Although the time between when it makes decisions to run recipes would have to be a bit longer. Could you also set a minimum distance for activation? Or is it already in there? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think what would be the most succinct way to do that. Hmm. Not sure, actually. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I'm not sure... Um, how you could do that with the fewest combinators with that setup. Maybe best to change the mod setting restart then load the game without sync. Uh, we can check right now if... Well, I can literally just do a line of radar construction pylons and see if the bots will be able to build them out up here. Is that connected? No, it's not. How many do we have? Uh, how many do we have? 45, okay. Looks like the bots are at their halfway point right about here. Oh, that's still not close enough to connect the wires. Oh, okay. All right, where where are you going back to? It looks like it's going all the way back here. We might have to, after changing these mod settings to match our save, 
uh, go back to the menu and then make that one change. Because I think using sync mod, I, I think using sync mods with save may have cancelled that out. Just checked in the setting. Just check in the settings if it's enabled. Ah, true. Settings mod pylon. It is not. Okay, that would have been easier. Uh, why don't? I don't even need to save it right now. Um, let's just jump back to the menu. Syncing mods also syncs their settings. Yeah, that's what I figured. Of course, it's a lot more work to not sync mods to get from from where we were to get back. Uh, also, Chucky, good to see you again. Oh, well, welcome, hope you're doing well. Settings, mods, pylon, go. And we have to restart again. Actually, only one when thinking about... Currently last row of combinators outputs value 1 for selected. Closed error recipe, it will output... Original error... What if... Hmm... What if you just added, like, negative 1 or something? Uh, no, I think... I don't think that would work out the way I was thinking, but my idea was if you added a constant combinator that offset the value of the zero recipe a little bit, um, add a negative to that. So that it's harder to do better than no recipe at all. That might work actually. It just depends on if there's a good threshold um, to set that negative zero signal. What's currently the problem? Uh, we're just trying to get it so that uh, radar construction pylons have... I think they have like one robot recharge spot on them. Uh, but for some reason it is a mod setting that's disabled by default. Also, mostly pointless arcosphere optimization. What's pointless about figuring figuring out fun stuff? Actually, only one when thinking about it. Currently, last row of combinator outputs value one. I think my brain is checking out. It's had enough of arcospheres for the next five minutes. I was thinking about adding some negatives somewhere, but only one combinator is really needed. Small change to existing last row. Oh, oh we didn't save, did we? That's fine. Uh, let's just add a line of these up here. And if the bots can build all the way up there... Well, I'm sure we're going to see... The fact that this has... Oh, wait, never mind. We're struggling for power. That's not great. Once this thing reaches 5k, we'll be fine. Alright, so you... Hey, there it is. Very nice. That's what I like to see. Okay, we can get rid of these now. Did I... No. What is that? Nothing. Okay, good to know. I 
just got to watch the order that I mark these for deconstruction. All right, then. How's our new ship? It is at 7,000 degrees. I would say that's enough. It's never going to get down to 5,000. Do we have any more ships coming over here? Stardust 1 is coming. Um... You know what? I'm going to force it to land here. Let's go 3720. And we're going to set this to target left clamp 3720. And once it's here, I'll change those back. That will also give us... Uh, let me just fix the power. Whoops. Oh no. Okay. Next this here. Uh, this here, perhaps. Uh, we want to siphon power from the spaceship. And I'll be needing to get rid of these power poles. What is it carrying? Nothing. Okay, cool. Well, I guess I didn't need to make those robopods, but it's not like I'm going to go to the trouble of getting rid of them now. That's going to be so much nicer for... Well, I guess when it comes to building um, building this stuff out, it's still good to put down superchargers. I'm sure the uh, radar construction pylons are going to get overwhelmed by bot recharge at scale. I believe the large dot is you, or at least the player camera location that SE moves around for the satellite view. Yes. I was looking at something that wasn't refreshing on the map up here earlier, that I was confused about. Not the uh, red dot, just to be clear. All right, when is our ship getting here? About 30 seconds? More like a minute, which means three minutes. Real time. Arcospheres are not... Oh, yes they are. Okay, good. How close are we to getting some science? Uh, I think we had 252 of these last time I checked. We have no Tesseracts. And that's actually the only reason this isn't moving right now. Uh, Tesseracts require cubes, which we've got here. Um, we also tend to consume all of them, making Maquium processors. Uh, we're actually full on Nequium processors for now, but I wonder if we couldn't afford to... Oh, we're actually bottlenecked on plate here, apparently. Uh, the bots are a little slow. Let's bump this up. Come to think of it, I could put this up here, I guess. It's also... Never mind. 
I'm just wondering if we can speed up Tesseract production without much trouble. Yeah, this actually needs to be a stack inserter. Let's bring the spiders over here. Oh, they're already here. Fantastic. And do we need another output inserter? Is it actually... Okay. There's nothing to input here right now. Yeah, I don't think another machine would speed up Tesseract production right now. Maybe more logistic bots? We've only got 50. We're actually, yeah, 0 out of 50 logistic bots available. That's a milestone for this place. Uh, okay, so... I haven't really left a good spot here to use this as the drop-off for bots. Unless we just assume always that there's already logistic bots here. Which we could do. Um... Why do we have a logist uh robopod? Let's do buffer chest filter inserter constant combinator robots and robots and we're looking for one stack of construction bots, just in case. And... Six stacks of logistic bots. Oh, wait, what? Total logistic bots? Total construction bots? Seems good. A repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Oh, well, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, I'll actually make that a regular filter inserter, just so we can have two filters on it. And... Uh, maybe not a purple chest, actually. Passive provider chest? That'll do. And then please bring uh, one stack of each type of bot. I could actually multiply that by three. Um, we've got Tons of room for more logistic bots here, but on the other hand, I don't think we're going to need that many. Three hours later, where are all the logistic bots? Yes. Okay. Our ship has arrived. We've got plenty of power. We've got sulfuric acid. Uh, we've got sulfuric acid not all the way down here, though. Let's go fix that. In fact, let me use my spider that I summoned just so that I wouldn't use up... Uh, life support. And 
we'll get some... Sulfuric acid added in. Over here. And don't actually need it here. That's just ice. And as for this mine... Looks like it's all good. Uh, we don't have a beacon here yet. Whoops. I hope I'm going to be able to... Somehow... I can fit the entire mine under one beacon if I remove one of the miners. Uh, but maybe it would actually be better to just use two beacons. Yeah, I think we'll just use two beacons this time. Okay, so this goes here, this goes here, and we'll go nice and fast. Um, I can already change this back. And I'm pretty sure by the time this is full of Naquitite and auto takes off, this will definitely be above 5000 degrees. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, I still haven't found a use for this other connecting point for the spaceship clamps. It would be great if we can set uh, the anchor ID. That way we could basically have this clamp is only active if there's quite a lot of naquitite here, maybe. How many bots do we have in the system? 500. Way more than enough. Did we get our fluid? We did not. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, we do have an unfortunate few miners here that don't have beacon coverage. I could move this one to the left. to remove that. Rip. I don't mind if these ice ones are slow. They're, they're already way more than fast enough. So does this randomly switch to ice? Or how does that work? Beacon does interrupt pipes. Uh... Oh, up there it did. Well, it didn't actually, but we didn't. We missed a, p a piece of pipe. But it's provided by the next mines, yes. Oh, there it is. Ice, ice, ice. So when does it switch back to Naquitite? Uh, And why does it suddenly slow down like that? It's producing ice at the speed of na- That's so weird. What? Maybe it's just not refreshing this uh, icon here while we've got it selected. Yeah, exactly. 
I think you're right, Alex. I think if we click mash this, we're always going to find that ice is fast and aquatite is slow. Okay. Bug report it? I don't think we need to worry too much about that one. As long as we're not, like, losing out on productivity bonus or something. I think that's totally fine. How often do you get a chance for that in Factorio? Hey, Tumbly. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so let's confirm this goes where we think it does. Considering the belt is still moving, um, I think we're probably fine. Also, can we get this to cover... We need it one, two, three tiles to the right. Yeah, we can... We can make that work. Oh. Uh, about here. That's one off. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, I think we need to do something like this. There we go. And don't forget this pipe. Oh, are we good? Oh yeah, I forgot to move this back. Also, yeah, no, that wouldn't make a difference. One off, indeed. That's a pretty good fit. We've got two beacons covering everything here, except for these two mines that only give us ice, which I don't particularly care about. In fact, um, we don't even really need the productivity bonuses for these two. Okay, so what's our rate? Uh, just slightly less than half a belt for Naquitite. 21 plus 12, 33. And this is all moving all the way up here. Fantastic. 33 plus 8 is well under 45. Not to mention this splits over here. So yeah, we don't have to worry about any more belts. I wonder what's left. Autoclave finished? Possibly. Let's see. Tolibai. Uh We can't use confirm hostile extinction to check if there's no biters left because we've done that before. Um, but what about the other planets? There's two Vitamelange planets, one in each of these two systems. This one, I'm sure, is far from... It's not that far from finished. The area where there's basically no biters has expanded quite a bit. How about... Irene? Uh, Irene... I have my doubts, but Irene may be clear. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um. Do I load the save? <laughs> do I load the save or do we beam Irene again? 
I think we load the save. Also, sync mods. Oh, right, that was because of that change. Autosave? Autosave is either switched off or it's like an hour old because uh, the save takes so long right now because we've got two whole planets exposed so that we can um, clear the biters. Oh no. Well, it won't take long to replicate what we just did. Yep. We're here for you. Now to fix all the pipes and beacons again? Yeah, but it won't take long. We know exactly what we're doing. Nope. Uh, I should be much more careful with those buttons. I mean, normally there's nothing to worry about with them, but that was the exception to the rule. Venislian and Own Galaxy, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Yeah, this right here is why we don't have autosave enabled right now. How long did it take to beam scour that planet? A while. Um, but the more energy we pump into it, the less time it takes. It's kind of like, how long does it take to mine a million iron plate? Alright, so we need to get over there with some pipes. Uh, we want this beacon right about here. We need some pipe across here. Across here and across here, and this part is going to need its own connection. Uh, actually, I can put this up here and connect these uh, thusly. And then, don't forget this part, Stardust 1, Target Clamp 3720, this clamp 3720. This is actually much simpler to set up than when we had all the chests all over the place over here. It's also going to be better for the bots. Although EPS high usage would be slightly higher, I suppose. But it's still pretty negligible. Do we have ammo? We've got some ammo. Oh, there's more on the way. Underground belts would lower UPS a bit, I suppose. Not a whole lot. Let's 
it's also just not that much going on belt-wise here to begin with. It's not like we've got some big balances or anything. Uh, and this one goes over here. We don't need prods for the ice, not really. How long would this take to run out? It's got access to 125k, so I imagine it would last at least a minute. Except I don't have a drill. Alright, uh, let's check on Irene again, I suppose. And this time, don't delete surface. Um, you surface. There's apparently no biters. Confirm hostile extinction. There are still hostiles detected on Irene. Okay. I'm sure the beams just have to cross the entire planet a few more times to get some of these expansions. Oh, I could have just waited for that mine anyway. Okay. And I think we are done here. Where's our ship? It's about two minutes away. Am I having deja vu what happened? I accidentally deleted surface on a planet that we've been spending ages clearing of biters. So best course of action was to uh, go back in time just a little bit. Old Busk, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Passion Sausage. Still love that name. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, I think we need to redo... Um, we need to redo supplying the bots here as well. So we're looking for... Let's say one stack of each. And then buffer, filter, constant, set filters, blacklist, robot statistics, total bots, and we add a negative. Uh, to offset how many we want of each. Okay. That should be fine. If we get... If the day comes when we need uh, 900 logistic bots to keep up with our Arcospheres, that will be a good day. So, is our ship here? Very almost. 21 seconds. Uh, we need to remove this stuff or the ship won't be able to land. We are at 4.2k heat here. Did we send our ship? Nope. 8,000 degrees, even better. Off you go to Stardust. 
And I'm guessing we probably should add yet another one. Uh, if we're not, if we're bottlenecked on ships now, we're probably, we probably need more than just one more. Beacon on Reactor Island. Correct. Thank you. We need one here and one here. And here is our ship. We can change this back. Uh, Fryzen Peter, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, where's our sulfuric acid? It's being pumped in. It's just taking a minute to saturate. All right, drills are working, and it might take a moment longer to see the same effect down here. We did put a pump somewhere in here, didn't we? Yes, there it is. And it is... it's actually 440 per second already. Which means it's not going to take as long as I thought for all of these drills to get going. Uh, I can actually just click here and see that 24k fluid is in the system. So we're pretty sure that all of those are going to be working. Cool. Come to think of it, uh... Let's just put some efficiency modules in those miners, in those drills. Alright, that one is going to take its sweet time filling up. Uh, we'll definitely be over 5,000 degrees here before this ship leaves. So I'm pretty sure we're good to leave this place behind. We've got ammo here, ammo here, ammo here. Fantastic. I caught me some tea hacks, cyclomatic. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, how was your last set of runs, by the way? Uh, let's. Ask for an entire stack of ammo for each of these. Save game? Uh, good point. Let's do that. If I'm going to save, I'm going to take a break, because it does take literally a couple of minutes. Um, I might take a break in about 15 minutes, maybe? Oh, good point. So, Cyclo. Still de-rusting, didn't run long, instead switched to modded play. Fair enough. Alright, I can't remember why I came here, but I'm pretty sure it's done just by the fact that I'm physically here. Uh, I hope I'm not getting COVID brain. Beacon mod modules. Yes, good point. Thank you. Thank you very much, El Puncho. Um, I actually have some tier threes as well. And that's still negative. That's plus 40%. Okay. 
There we go. Negative 80% power consumption almost feels like cheating. Of course, the beacons take up 10 megawatts each. When did the game start to lag? Is it a late game thing or did it start from early? No, it's definitely a late game thing. There's a lot going on in this mod and I didn't build conservatively to begin with. Um, so this is our main planet, Nalvis. Um, it includes, let's see, train stop manager. I think this is all of our stations everywhere, and there's no way for me to filter it based on just Nalvis. Um, but we've actually got 1,942 logistic train stops. Um, usually these blocks involve... Uh, I would guess on average three or four... Probably like four to five somewhere is the average for how many logistic train stops we've got in each of these uh, rail blocks. And then up in orbit, uh, this is our main orbital base. Uh, we've also got a great many outposts and a lot of spaceships. It, it, it's a lot. It adds up. And these are all the researches that we've done or still need to do. So it's a very big mod. Um, I would probably go for scaling it down a little bit next time. And also use some mods that give like giant containers and loaders and stuff that loads a train with like four entities instead of uh what 48 or 96 use ltn trains yeah mostly ltn trains um i only use vanilla trains what for things like trash pickup because it doesn't matter what we're picking up um and on a couple of outposts, I've used vanilla trains because there's very little for the trains to have to do there. Oh, we've run out of spaceship floor? What? Uh, maybe I should request some more. You missed explanations on how Veldex Arcosphere Balancer works. I heard the word brilliant. Yeah, it was. It's really, it's really succinct. Really clever. You clear SE... I don't... SE K2? Yeah, there's no K2 here. This is just space exploration. The Bokios? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, so I think we're ready to go. Uh, these miners are working. Yes, good, fantastic. And thank you very much for the follow as well. Does it get worse with K2? Uh, I would, from my limited experience with K2, I would say yes and no. Uh, because K2 gives you some tools that would make certain things easier as well. Alright, let's go back to Nalvis Orbit. And one last look around and make absolutely sure all of this stuff is working properly. Oh, let's do a rate calculation on the whole place. I want to know... Um, I want to know what our theoretical maximum naquim is. 
10.5k, I got excited for a second there. 176 per second. That is more than I was expecting. That's just under four belts. On Nalvis, we've got facilities to process... Uh, only 158 per second. So once we get some more ships, um, this will be our bottleneck. And I think I'd like to keep it there. I don't think I want to add more than this for the rest of the playthrough. Otherwise we'll just be chasing that bottleneck until the end of time. Uh, we did unlock... What was it? I wish you could see research history. Um, catalog? I think, yeah. We unlocked Deep Space Catalog 4, which means we've got some new uh, stuff to build. And... I kind of want to replace this mess with, uh, with the design that we were looking at before. But I don't feel like doing it right now. Let's have a look at what we need to make these data cards. So interstellar travel data can only be done in a spaceship. Uh, reality hypergraph analysis data needs a deep supercomputer and Naquium processors. We should probably do that here. It's only one Naquium processor to get 50 data. And we have to cycle through a thousand supercooled thermofluid and a hundred cryonite rods. But we've already got all of that stuff here. Um, so that's actually going to be really straightforward. We could do it right now, except we need a deep supercomputer. Uh, teleportation data requires singularity data, time space anomaly data. Naquim cube cryonite rod blank data card. So that's one that we won't be doing where we've got our arcospheres. We'll just make another block for this. And wormhole data. This is the one that we're definitely doing here. Uh, four kinds of arcosphere. Naquim cube, cryonite rod, blank data card, becomes wormhole data. That's pretty straightforward. Oh no, it outputs cool thermofluid. Ah, uh, why are you like this? Okay, um... Uh... I could either pump the thermofluid we've got all the way down here somewhere, or I could just have like another drop off for it. I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards the ladder. I can see you have a huge base in orbit and on Nalvis. Do you process everything from the rest of the planets on Nalvis and send it into orbit? Yes, uh, with very few exceptions. Um, in fact, the only exception I can think of, anything that I can get a productivity bonus, I go for it. Uh, except for this, because we can build this on the ground, heavy assembly. Um, but we need so few of them. If you look at FNEI, heavy assembly goes into high temp turbine generators, uh, dimensional anchor, nexus, spaceship antimatter engine, uh, deep splitter, and arco link storage. Um, yeah, it really is the, the volume of these that we need isn't enough to justify uh, even more, like, space shuttles to bring another type of resource up. Although, if we had a space elevator, I would certainly do that. Uh, 
Oh, I almost forgot. Um, our new ship. I think... Here it is. Nope, we're fine. I did actually remove the extra chests. One, two, three, four, five. Thought about some vegan food for lunch today, but since Cyclomatic showed up, I have to take a juicy burger now. Why is that? So everything you can create on Nalvis, other planets are sending it to Nalvis. Yes. I guess with space elevators, we would get... Um, we would get ships to deliver to orbit, then we'd take stuff down to Nalvis, produce it there with productivity bonuses, and then bring it back up here. I think that would be the way to go. Oh, we haven't actually researched Deep Supercomputer yet either. That's going to take a minute. Is this train okay? You are looking for Energy Catalog, Tier 1. That stacks to 8,000 in a train. This is the downside of this particular loading system, uh, that we have to define how much fits in a train for each resource. But other than that, uh, for something that'll work for anything in the logistic network, uh, this is, I think, still the best design I've come up with. We have requester chests, uh, and then we have... Uh, these only trigger... Wait, what? Green signal equals zero. Uh... Yeah. These stop when the train gets here. Well, no, th these stop once these chests are full, and these start once these chests are full. Uh, and then we have some precise loading. This is a latch. Um, and this latch triggers as soon as these are full. We know they're full despite different stack sizes because we read from all of these chests which add up to a full train. Uh, and we have negative, a full train, plus one. And then each has to equal negative one. Or rather, anything equals negative one as the condition for the latch. Maybe a stupid question, but why are you spending uh, sending these spaceships to other planets? You can't get these with a rocket? I, I prefer spaceships. I don't like the cargo rockets anywhere near as much. I don't like dealing with the... Uh, uh, the cargo rocket sections and space capsules. I don't like that they crash. Uh, I don't like how much liquid rocket fuel they require. Um, it, it's just much more of a logistical headache. And spaceships are cool. They're also more fun to design. Alright, uh, what were we... That's right, cool thermofluid. Can we fit that there? Not quite. This goes here, I think. Yeah, that looks about right. Spiders down this way. So you use ships to transport between planets, yes. Okay, so we need a uh, negative 275 degree thermofluid in. 
negative 10 degree thermofluid out. Do the hokey pokey, shake it all about. The other things we need are already in this block, if I recall. Aquim cube, cryonite rod, check and check. And blank data cards, I don't think we're requesting those here yet. I could just add another one of these here. Blank data card. Oh wait, I requested a whole train load. Uh, let's not do that. Okay. Uh, I forgot also blank data cards. We've stopped keeping up with those. I don't know when that happened. Uh, copper appears to be a problem. Is it because we're just using resources, or did copper fall over somehow? Considering the orchard ships are all in motion, uh, I don't think our copper supply from there is a problem right now. Uh, what about the sand ships? Moving... Uh, mining, basically. Moving, 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 moving. Well, they're all in motion and none of them are queuing, so we could probably use more. Um, but I don't want to add any more of these old ships. We could just hit up a new location for copper instead. Is that actually the problem, though? Uh, let's see. We've got a million copper core fragments here. Okay, uh, apparently we're bottlenecked on processing copper core fragments. That's a lot easier to solve. Uh, I think this block up here would make the most sense. And... Wait, what? I think I just spotted a... Yeah, see that little blueprint recipe thing there? Uh, somewhere in here there is a crafting combinator settings entity. It got stuck here somehow. I wonder if just copy-paste is going to put it up here as well. Oh, it does. Okay, I wonder where it is. In the bottom right corner? Nope. Top half, then... It's way up the top somewhere. Found it. Uh, I can't really... So what I need to do here is put down a ghost of a crafting combinator and then remove it. There we go. That's easy. And this one should be right here as well. Fantastic. Alright, let's get our local construction spiders. Oh, what are they doing here? 
I don't remember why I sent them there. Alright, uh, let's send them back through the mall in case they need anything. And then get them to build out all of this. At this point, I'm not too stressed about making sure we get the productivity modules in there. We're losing out on resources because we're not processing uh, copper core fragments fast enough right now. So I definitely just want to get that working as soon as possible. Ten minutes till we are physically back at Nalvis orbit. Oh, I did say I was going to take a break at some point, didn't I? I can't remember what I was going to do when we take a break. Something that takes some time because... Oh, just saving the game, probably. Just remember to save. Yep. Alright. Um, I think... I think now is probably as good a time as any then, since we're waiting on a couple of things to happen. Oh, I did want to design this though. Then again, I can probably do a better job of that after getting a... taking a little break. And we've got everything here that... I'm, I'm not about to forget that I'm here to design wormhole data. All right, let's go with LTN screensaver and words on stream. We'll start that in about 30 seconds. Save, okay. Can I save it while it's in? No, here we go. Commercial. Alright, 30 seconds, and we'll start words on stream. Good luck, have fun, and I'll be back in a few minutes.
Damn, that looks difficult. What kind of hellish difficulty is this for level 3? What the... We're almost there, though. Rice? Oh no. Well, ripping pepperonis. 
let's continue with some space exploration. Uh, turn that off. There we go. And we're not actually at 16 UPS, surely. 18 though, what is going on? That is a significant drop from what we had earlier. Like, just earlier today. Maybe I should close all of this stuff here. That might help a bit. That actually did help more than I expected. Unless we just happened to... Oh, wait, the spiders weren't building... No, they're not. Wait, how did the spiders take this long to get here? Three UPS down? Yeah, I have no idea. What changed since we took a little break? I do not know. How's our new outpost? It's over 5,000 degrees. Fantastic. So this is probably... We can probably stop thinking about this one now. I'll check on it a bit later, just to make sure. Uh, that is a decent flow of Naquitite, though. Speaking of Naquitite flow, we need another 2,000 degrees before we can launch this one. And integrity check. Good to go. We've got... Uh, we could use some more antimatter fuel. It just hasn't been pumped in yet. It takes about that long, about the same amount of time as it takes for this to heat up. It's still one PS down from where it was before our break. Yeah, there are certain things that happen in spikes just because of the nature of trains and spaceships uh, delivering things. But still, I would not expect that noticeable of a drop. My computer's not melting, is it? Uh, this thing. You're building a new section? Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure a bunch of ghosts don't... Like, we're not putting down rail signals right now. Those would be some very, very noticeable spikes. Um, all right. Temperatures are all totally fine. I would expect as much since it's uncomfortably cold. In my current playthrough, Biders on Nalvis made up about 20% of my total update time until they were gone. Yep, that sounds about right. Um, speaking of which, how close are we... We've got a ways to go before we can mark Coniferous as extinct. Irene, though... Uh, it's possible. Let's not press delete surface this time. Confirmed the surface of Irene is clear of hostiles. Threat. 1% because it's got biter meteors. Fantastic. Let's delete surface. That is going to be good for... 
It's it's more good for how long it takes to save the game than it is for UPS. But I'm sure it's not zero UPS either. Also, we're way up above 20 again. Well, way up. <laughs> way up above 20, yes. that Those are our standards now. Um, but yeah, we'll be able to do the same for Coniferous eventually. Um, we've already got stuff happening on Ketoba. Old ships come here. I don't think we're going to need to worry too much about upgrading that to antimatter. We were kind of already ahead of erudite, and now we've got just way more erudite than we ever need. I can't be sure if it was because a lot of nests were in the pollution cloud since they were removed at the same time. But it was a lot more than expected, for sure. Oh yeah. I mean, this was on an older computer, but when I was doing a Death World playthrough um, on stream with the Rampant mod, uh, I accidentally loaded the game without Rampant activated just once. There were about 90% fewer biters, and the UPS went from something like 15 to 20 to nearly 60. Uh, biters are not insignificant when it comes to UPS. And unfortunately I can't get rid of all of them unless I do... Maybe I should use an extinction bomb on this place. Then again, maybe because we keep this surface uh, trimmed. Um, it's actually not that big of a UPS impact here. Um, but I know there are actually biters further out than where we've got revealed um, that are getting simulated, I'm pretty sure. The pollution, I think it, it's at least as far as the pollution cloud. Lots and lots of pathing with biters, yeah. You can see just how impactful that is if you play with uh, the AAI mod. If you give uh, if you give vehicles move orders, they use the same pathing as the biters. Uh, and if you're not careful, like if you give lots of vehicles a move order at the same time, and the move order is to go a long way, it's basically going to pause the game for a little while. Um, it's better to have most of the vehicles follow a leader. Uh, or hold some kind of formation, uh, and then just have one of them path. In my experience, radars revealing too much made save file large using delete empty chunks mod. Helped so much for panel uh, planets that I do not need. That made saving faster. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, before we had... Uh, earlier on in this playthrough, uh, we didn't have this button confirm hostile extinction uh, and if we clear the biters and then like trim the surface whoops uh, if we clear the biters and then trim surface um, all the biters come back in the areas that we've trimmed so we actually had to keep planets completely uh, searched uh, completely revealed um, suffice to say the save file got pretty big. I don't think trim helps if the pollution reaches out, since it will just recreate the blocks. Yeah, but not the entire planet, unless you've got enough pollution for that. That reminds me, we were going to... What is the command for removing pollution? Let's look this up real quick. Uh, Factorio Move Pollution. Console. And. Turn off pollution. Game map settings pollution enabled false. Okay. Uh.
for blank surface in pairs game dot surfaces do? Does that mean just map dot settings etc is only going to remove it for one surface? Game.player.surface.pollute. Game.map underscore. I know it's a command, but Twitch. Site not found. Well. Hmm. Okay, we can try copying this in. Uh, I guess we should do a save first. Does this remove all pollution immediately, or just stop new from being created. Uh, we'll see. We've still got a lot of space. Um, at, at the very least, we've got that one other planet that's completely revealed. So the save is going to take a moment. This is actually the first time I've um, typed in anything that counts as a cheat for this playthrough. How much time are you into this playthrough? About a month of game time. The Seeker, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. There's our little green bar. Come on. Okay, console time. Console time. Here we go. Paste this in. Uh, what am I supposed to do? under four blank surface in pairs game dot surfaces do that was the only part that's blank do I do I actually just put four underscore tried disable achievements please repeat uh, does the red mean it didn't work Let's see. Pollution. I don't see any pollution. At all. Uh, we can look on another planet, I suppose. I don't... Oh, this place had tons of pollution. Yeah, uh, it seems to be gone. If we look at a miner or something, does it still... I'm guessing the tooltip still says it makes pollution. Like, I doubt that would be dynamically changed. All pollution. It's not cheating to remove pollution late game. It's not like it'll trigger biter attacks, but... Deleting stone using... Delivery cams. <laughs> That's cheating. How is that cheating? It's disabled the option when you start a game, there's an option to disable pollution. Looks like that's what it's done, yeah. Um, I, the thing is, with our recent fluctuations with UPS, I really don't know. I'll, I'll close my browser again if that's having an impact. Um, yeah, with the recent fluctuations in UPS, it's hard to say. Uh, but we might have got 
one, one and a half or so UPS out of that? Question mark? I guess I should have looked at uh, the game update first. Does it show pollution somewhere? Would it just not show it if it was not part of the equation anymore? Yeah, I don't know where to find it. Won't show pollution if it's disabled. Well, there you go. I see no significant improvement. Yeah, it's hard to say when it fluctuates anyway. Especially when we've got a dip. Circuit Network 7? Yep. Impossible. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I see one set of furnaces is just not even... Half of them are not even active right now. That doesn't seem right. We already had enough mines and spaceships to keep up with three of these before. I wonder if... Why is this ship not leaving? There's no antimatter here? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's bad. Oh, that's very bad. Uh, antimatter. Wherefore art thou? It's not ready to launch yet. How fast are we making antimatter? It's like double whatever this is. This is actually... Super cool thermo fluid. Might be a bottleneck for antimatter. That's kind of wild. I'm pretty sure these two blocks are significantly more than we need for now. Uh, if we can keep up with it. So let's see. 1.2k supercooled thermofluid per second. That is a lot. Um, we haven't upgraded a lot of these speed modules. Let's do that. Grab our spiders. Uh, I kind of want to design this, but this is sort of more urgent. So we're going to go all of these machines. Uh, where are we? Hypercooler and thermal radiator 2. Speed module 6. And I don't want to change the beacon. Let's just do it like this. And like this. And like this. So what's our current rate? Let's assume we have no trouble keeping up with the inputs for this. I think that's a reasonable assumption. We are net positive on cold, uh, exact ratio on negative 100, 1.17k thermofluid per second. Didn't we need more than that for just one of these? Yeah. Yeah, we need a lot more throughput. We, we need a lot more thermofluid cooling here. The other day I read each available storage slot increases the update time by a fixed amount. Maybe that's causing trouble in combination with all these bots and storage chests. As in each uh, chest? 
that wouldn't surprise me too much. Well, we already got a bunch of these replaced. I think it's going to mess up the ratio, though. Um, because these things have fewer module slots than the hypercoolers. Let's see. Uh, well, we have net positive cold thermo fluid. And then this ratio is based on these, so it might actually be totally fine. That would be good, because I don't want to redesign this block a second time. Also, it looks like we're really full on cool thermo fluid. Which is a problem, because it means the trains can't output it as a waste product. We're supposed to be... Oh, wait, this is... Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, we're supposed to be keeping this kind of empty. In fact, you can see there, this doesn't pump into here unless it's really close to empty. And yet, all of our cold thermo fluid storages are really, really full. Hmm. We've actually got a train dropping it off now. Oh, that's negative 100. Oh, it's picking up negative 100 from here. Okay. Yeah, I might have to make some more thermofluid blocks. Let's check the ratios since we just changed those modules. Uh, cold thermofluid is a uh, cool thermofluid rather is still like plus six hundred. It didn't really change that very much at all. Then we get a whopping four hundred and. 52, negative 273 degree thermofluid per second. So once this is done, we've got a bit more than enough to keep up with one of these blocks for antimatter. That means we need to build even more stuff. Also, we don't have enough be uh, modules for this right now. Let's go back to the mall for a moment. And come back down here. I could start building up here for some more thermofluid. Then again, maybe down here close to where we need lots of it would be a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. Do these guys have a bunch of scaffolding? They do. I'll have them come down here first. And we'll add some blocks. Yes, build more stuff, indeed. Check ratios for beers plus two burgers gives a hundred satisfaction. Oh my, UPS was nice knowing you. Yep. It feels kind of crazy to me that we've got three blocks like this just for thermofluid and it's still not enough. I don't know how I could fit much more. We could have less storage space. 
But if we want the trains to be able to drop off the different fluids... Um... Well, how many fluids are there here? 25, negative 10, negative 100, and negative 275. This might be an opportunity to redesign this. We could have kind of a spiral pattern, clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm thinking, since we're using left-hand drive on the straights, counterclockwise would probably be the smoothest way to go about it. Doesn't really matter. But yeah, um, we can have like, drop off 25 here, drop off negative 100 here, like drop off and pick up for both, along these lines. I think I want to try that. Well, didn't think I would redesign Thermofluid again, but here we are. Especially considering that the storage for cool Thermofluid is way too full. Um, I don't think that was because of a mistake in design here. I think it's just the sheer amount of it that comes back. You'd think it wouldn't be much of a problem, considering how much negative 100 and negative 273 degree thermofluid we need. How much energy slash material science packs, etc. are you making per minute? Uh, well, it depends how much we're consuming. But this is our graph lately. We've had a lot of the science packs saturated for a long time because everything's waiting on Nacrium for deep space science. Ten point two deep space science pack threes in the last per minute in the last hour. All right, so. Got a few more rail signals to place here. Alright, so we're definitely going to have rail like this. And this. And this. And the lurching will continue until we're not placing any more signals. When T-Hack says, I'm thinking, I get goosebumps. It's a mixture of excitement and watching three-year-old balancing on the edge of a cliff. Thank you. Krasus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. When building the arrays to make science packs, how much per minute should I aim for? Uh, if you're going to ratio it for, like, the end game stuff, consider this. All of the infinite research uh, requires deep space science packs, and deep space science packs are going to be very slow. Uh, so don't don't set a very high goal to start with, I would say. All right, so we're gonna have signals like so and train stops. Uh, which should be the pickup and which should be the drop off? We usually do our first requester here, so let's make this one the pickup. It 
might be possible with LTN, especially with fluids. Ooh, research. Uh, to make these stations both pick up and drop off at the same time. We did that a while ago with uh, heavy oil, for example. Because we need a bit of heavy oil to get started with coal liquefaction. Um, let's see. We aimed for a certain amount of heavy oil. Uh, small request threshold. Larger provide threshold. And we can just tell the pumps oil signal from the train has to be negative or positive to figure out if we're putting it in or taking it out. But I don't know if that's going to be able to work when we want a long train to be able to pick up or drop off. I think it would be a lot simpler if... Especially because we want the drop-off to be empty. And the pickup to be full. So the drop-off should probably be here, and the pickup should be here. If we're going counterclockwise. Uh, Pantaboo, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm feeling I shouldn't build as big as T-Rex. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have built as big as me if I'd realized just how big this playthrough would end up being. Um, oh, we got Deep Supercomputer. What? We just finished five researches. Deep Supercomputer, Wide Area Beacon 2, and all of our Tier 9 modules. And we're slowly chipping away at Mining Productivity 11. In my current playthrough, I'm aiming for about 45 catalogs each per minute. Seems good. Uh, so what are we... Okay, so broadly, my idea is... How should I illustrate this? I want this to be full. This to be empty of the same fluid. And then we're going to do the same thing here, here, and here. Round and round in circles. Well, not in circles, because... It stops at negative 275 degrees. Um, let's remove that for now. We'll start with negative uh, with 25 degree up the top. This one we keep empty. This is 25 degree drop off. How did we do it before? I don't think we did. Yeah, no. We didn't do like a dual station. Where did we do 25 degree pickup? I don't think we ever do pick up 25 degree thermofluid, do we? Like, what is what is 25 degree thermofluid go into, actually? And why can't we search it? Um, do I have to go somewhere else for fluids? No? That's kind of irritating. Okay. Uh, I guess this one's already going to break the pattern. Ooh. 
we can make a 25 degree thermo fluid pick up just in case. It's fine. Wait, did I do that backwards? I did. Alright. Yeah, no, that's right, that's right. Alright, so this is gonna be what each quarter is gonna look like if we can make it fit. We're gonna have... Oh my goodness. We're gonna have 25 degree thermo fluid here. That almost fits. Uh, seven, seven pump. Or we could ditch the symmetry for some efficiency here. that can pump as fast as possible. Almost. And we need a whole bunch. Whoa, we're back. Oh, I totally forgot about that build on Nalvis. How's that looking? It's not only completely done, but we also have all of the modules. Fantastic. Uh, let's add an icon to the map for this. Four fragment copper. And that gives us what? Almost four belts? Almost four belts of copper ore. Uh, and I think we've got two of these now. I don't know if the copper ore that we're picking up can keep up with... Uh, the fragments can keep up with 360 per second. But that is the next step to improving the bottleneck anyway. Alright, so let's see. This is... Negative 10. Let's mark it on the map. Thermo fluid. 25 degrees. Negative 10 degrees. Negative 100 degrees. Negative 275. Uh, I think we only need the thermal radiators in this corner. It's literally the only thing they can do. Maybe we actually want to stop using the efficient recipes. Uh, and use the faster ones. This makes negative 10 becomes negative 100. If we use cryonite slush, how much better is that? I couldn't be bothered with it before, but... Twenty and one becomes twenty. Ten... It's twice as fast, but the cryonite slush basically goes to waste. Why not just build more machines? UPS. But we have to do the Crynite slush logistics anyway. Although we do have it here. 
Um, and the same thing applies. 10 becomes 10. Oh, it's actually... These are both one second, but this goes from two seconds to one second. So it's like... Four times as fast. The super cool thermo fluid. Might be worth considering. It's only one cryonite slush per recipe. Um, I'm pretty sure we've got cry. Wait, what? Oh no, I just messed up the. Can I just delete this? Control right click. Nervous orbit. Uh, was it Control shift 3 That's what I did, isn't it? Yes, there we go. You'll never need the negative 273 input station. Might as well save the UPS, that's true. Oh, is this thing ready? This, is, this thing is very ready to go. Let's line up another one. I'm sure we'll need it. Okay. So this one doesn't use any cryonite. We can do the fast recipe. This one loses a tenth of a percent. Uh, uh, sorry, a fifth of a percent. Turning it, turning it into negative ten. This loses uh, two percent. And this loses 10%. It's a pretty big difference. I don't... We don't have equivalent recipes for the hypercoolers, though. So I think we just leave this as is. I could drop it all the way down. All it does is save a few machines. Yeah, I think we'll be able to fit as many of these as we need here. This one's actually three times as fast. And this is four times as fast. Ideally, for one of these blocks, I would like it to be able to keep up with one of these. 1.2k, that's a lot though. Um, let's give it some beacon. I could go wide area beacon too, but I won't do that just yet. My food is arriving, nom nom nom. Indeed. Uh, let's give it some bacon. So it was 1.2k. That would require what? We don't have enough modules to find out right now. Alright, let's send these guys back to the mole. They're not crossing any spaceships. Uh, I think I will ride down there personally. Where's my remote? And I still haven't designed this thing. It's pretty straightforward though. Considering that we have to get rid of negative 10 degree thermo fluid, all the more reason that I should do the thermo fluid thing first. And I should probably come up with something that's a bit more aggressive for making sure we prioritize the use of thermo fluid that's dropped off. 
Not sure how to go about that. Um, and this will just be the one station. Don't get rid of the signal. It's going to be tricky to make this look like what I want it to look like. But I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna be happy with the end result. Probably put that there, there, and there. Maybe there. It's going to have some overlap in the middle. No, it's not. Alright, so 1.2k. With our current modules and beacons, uh, that actually just requires 10 of these. That doesn't seem so bad. What would it require with the other recipe? So we don't have to bother with the slush. Uh, 39? Okay, slush it is. I guess I already knew that since I calculated this as four times as fast. Okay, so it does complicate things because we need two different fluid inputs. Also, I forgot everything except for step one. Outputs 25 degree thermofluid as well. It's a little bit of a nuisance. Um, so we've got two inputs, two outputs, and one of them goes back here. Two inputs, two outputs, one of them goes back here. So we only have to design this part once. The question is, how do we do it? Can we put some modules in here? Also, where are our spiders? They're already back home. Alright, you can come back. In fact, you can go build this next block. Okay. It would be really nice if we could mirror these things, be able to make much, much better, nicer layouts. Um, let's look at what we did over here. I don't think it's going to be any easier than this. In fact, well, we're not going to be able to use this layout again. We can at least copy this much, probably. Have I really run out of these already? What? You could also consider building fully optimized 25 degree to negative 273 degree cooling cells without the intermediate stations. If your main bottleneck right now is just the super cool stuff. It's not just that, but for for instance, we don't... I, I designed this so that we could have trains drop off the recycled negative 10 degree, for instance. Um, but the negative 10 is full. I don't know to what extent that may have been a design flaw. I mean, the design isn't that complicated. I think it's just literally the sheer volume of this stuff that comes back. Um, so we need to actually skip 
How is it that this is full, but... Oh. Yeah, I see how I could improve this. This needs to flow both ways. And we need to stop making negative 10 degree when we've got it stored here. Are we doing the same thing with negative 100? Basically, yes, but it's not as much of a problem. Because our ratio is literally all of the negative 100 goes into 273 degree if we need it. Okay, so we can definitely do better. Um, so if that, uh, if we're using the cryonite version, uh, this goes in here and this goes in here. We're going to have a cryonite drop off here. Cryonite slush that is. Which would be the more convenient way to lay this out? Probably... Maybe... Like this? Uh, it's this stuff to this stuff that we're doing here. Not all the way from up there. Okay. Um, how about... This corner is a little bit awkward. Uh, correction, this corner is very awkward. But let's see what we can figure out here before we worry too much about that. That's actually the perfect length. From my experience, if negative 10 is full, then there is something wrong, because antimatter require a lot of cooling fluid. Yep. Yeah, I shouldn't have made that pump. Uh, instead of using a pump here to limit production of negative 10, uh, I should have just, like... If I had, like, a pump here, 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 and so on... Um... That would definitely help. Okay. Can we do... This? Actually, yes. But also... No, kind of. going to be a nuisance to get rid of the hot stuff. How about, about this? Oh, that's, that's a good fit. I kind of like that. That's 25 degree thermofluid that has to come all the way back to the top. And uh, our output is here. It's kind of hard to figure out where that's going to go. So this is... let me put down some constant combinators so I can see exactly what all this stuff is. This is slush. This is negative 10. This 
This is negative 100. This is negative 273. This is 25. Uh, yeah, so this one's going to be... Depending on how many machines we need, this one's going to be very straightforward. Um, let's give it some modules. You don't need the 25 degree output station either, do you? I don't think I do. But I would rather have it and not need it, question mark. We'll see. Uh, how fast would this be for Quionite slash very slow? 75. And 1.5k cool thermofluid. 1.125k cold. We actually need 1.875k of cold to meet our target. So double this. Can we do that? Kind of. have to change this up just a little bit. Eight tiles, figures. Actually... Oh no, that's just the 25 degree stuff. It probably doesn't matter if that's slow. 750 per second, that's probably going to be fine. So how fast is this? Uh, 3000 cold thermofluid per second. That could give us... 2000 super cold. I like where this is going. Uh, it's also pretty neat. We could maybe even go a little bit further up here. It'd be great if we could get everything we need from one more block. 4,000 cool thermofluid. If we used all of that uh, we're looking at like 2.5, 2.6k. Very nice. That's enough that we need to struggle to pump stuff in fast enough. 1,025 degree thermofluid out. Only 200 cryonite slush in. 4,000... Cool thermofluid. It's kind of a lot. Uh, how many machines would that be? Eighty-three or four. I think we might have to go for one of the less efficient recipes. 
Oh, this is one of the less efficient recipes. Okay, wow. Uh, what if we go for the fast one? I mean, I've seen the machine that makes 25 degree thermofluid um, has basically been idle almost always. So I dare say we can keep up with losing a little bit of it. Hi chat again, gentle hedgehog, welcome welcome, hope you're doing well. Have you tried turn off pollution? Yes. Was it useful? Uh, it's hard to say. I think it I think it improved things but not enough to be obvious probably. Is the middle row of 25 degree piping connected across the beacons? Uh, not yet, I don't think. We need to uh, stretch it just a little bit. Um, but I'm less worried about that for the moment compared to calculating these ratios. Alright, so what was our goal? Uh, 4,000 pool thermofluid. 46 of these. But we lose like 10% of our 25 degree thermofluid if we do this. Also... Hmm. We could actually fit it like this. Is fluid throughput going to be a problem? 700 per second per column. Uh, almost 1400 out. The 1400 out is going to be a problem. We can't... Oh, we can. We can fit pumps between there. That might be a bit more than necessary. But it just goes to show we can literally fit the maximum of fluid throughput three here. We also need to consider the difficulty of actually getting this fluid um, where it needs to be. Uh, so this would look something like this, I guess. We're not going to have a nice, neat layout here. Let's just assume that we're never exporting 25 degree thermofluid. We can pump it directly from the output of the other machines as well. Like these pipes right here, for example. It gives us a thousand I'd really rather not use the least efficient recipe. I can live with the 2% loss. I'm hoping... I'm hoping we can find a way to make this fit. So 3.1k becomes 3k. Each column is only 380. Wait, 
probably don't need these pumps. Uh, but I think I want to expand it as far as the beacon will help with it. So how much is that? Five hundred and twenty-two, five thirty-three, a bit over a thousand out. We should probably put at least a few pumps down this way. You can still put more modules in the beacon. True. Yeah, we should probably give up on efficiency here. Uh, power efficiency, that is. Good point. Sheep say met. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If I didn't already say so. Heyo, did you update to point six? I did not. Big C. Good to see you again also. Um, alright, so... If we go with this... 80, no wait, what? 88 machines should give us six and a half thousand. Um, that's more than we need. Unless we want to go full speed ahead down here again, which I think we probably do. Uh, 5.7k. And this gives us significantly more than that. So now the challenge is going to be fluid throughput. Uh, and if we go speed here as well. Um, what's our target? Hard to say. Let's say we want to consume all of the... Uh, all of the negative 100, 4.3k, approximately. That would just be 16 machines. 4.344. 4.344. Okay. And I think we'll probably... be using the exact same layout here. Uh, if I can figure out which way to point it. We want the output fluid to the right, I guess. Which is already how this one's set up. Ratio time. Exactly zero. That makes sense. Actually, I'm surprised. Because it was exactly one to one with the non cryonite slush recipe. And this was three times and this was four times. Speed wise. That's why I mentioned the optimized 25 to 273 cells because of the ratio perfect one-to-one -one builds, which don't have pipe throughput issues at all. Hmm. I don't know how you'd do it with no pipe throughput challenges. But I do want the trains to be able to give and take. Alright, so we're positive on negative 10 degree. Very much so. The only question now is of connecting it all up and actually making the fluid able to flow fast enough. Uh, but that is just about going to do it for today. 
Let's see who is streaming Factorio. We got Mucky. JD plays. It's been a while since I raided JD, actually. Master of the bus C blocking. Good luck. Thanks for the stream. Thank you for hanging out. Chucky, Repetitive Beats, Alex Hudson, thanks for hanging out. Have a good one. Johnny Depp plays, what? Uh, I usually try to raid with, with the same game I'm playing, though. Ben Wu, Sheep Say Man, take care. Oh, JD, I, I see what you did there. Derp. Alright. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're interested in that. And, uh, stay safe. Take care, guys. Like a boss. Mm, hacks! How you doing, mate?